Good. <laughs> I like that. Oh, good evening. This is the Town of East Chester Planning Board meeting of Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. If everyone would rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. So we're going to take attendance. Mr. Phil Nemesak. Present. Mr. Anthony Jacoby. Present. Jim Bonanno's here. And Louis Campagna. <clears throat> Present. And Mark Cunningham is not here. Uh, let's see. It's not quite a surprise. Well, I mean, <laughs> um, in, case you're, so in case you're watching, to, Mark. Mr. Nemesak, board member Nemesak, <laughs> okay. did you get to review any of the, the uh, minutes? I, I did. I, I provided uh, just a uh, short time ago my suggested revisions to the April 27, 2023 uh, transcript of our uh, East Chester Planning Board hearing of that date. Uh, and I provided that to uh, Lucas and uh, uh, Rob and the members of this board. So is that the one we could we could? Yeah, that's the one we could vote on. That's the only okay, one. Okay, so yeah. I make a motion to approve the East Chester Planning Board meeting, uh, meeting minutes of April 27, 2023. Yeah, subject to those revisions, second. Sub all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna run through the applications that we have in front of us today so everyone knows what we're gonna do. Uh, first one is Beach Street, second one is Bout Boxing. Those are existing applications that we're gonna continue and they're continued public hearings. And then there's new applications, 23-13 uh, Embassy Cleaners, 23-22 Westchester Meat Market, 23-23 uh, uh, Immaculate Conception and Assumption, 21-17-15 Tuckahoe Avenue Subdivision, and the last one is uh, Lakeshore Drive. Great, so that's the order. Nothing that we don't already know. So the first application is 23-02-203 Beach Street Subdivision. All yours, Mr. Dempsey. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Brian Dempsey. I'm a licensed professional engineer from the firm DTS Provident Design Engineering. Uh, since the last hearing that we had, um, the town planner had asked us to do some additional counts, some additional measurements and such, um, which we did and we've submitted to the, to the town. Um, I don't know if we can get the presentation. Um, Um, so, just and this is off of Google because we didn't want to take too many pictures with people in the area. Um, um, this is a situation that was brought up by the town planner um, with cars parked on one side of the road and if they're parked on both sides of the road, then this vehicle, as you can see, has would have difficulty getting through and if they're pedestrians or bicyclists, um, that's further impacts that issue there. So what we were asked to do was perform these different counts. Um, so we um, had a counting company perform the speed measurements and such so that we have an unbiased opinion. Um, the first set of counts, the tubes got ripped up, so they had to do a, another set. Um, and so what we found is they were done in two spots. One. Um, by overlook on the top part of a beach, and then one uh, west of Saibonoi, um, so like on the bottom part. Uh, the speeds on the top part um, with average speed was 24 miles per hour in both directions. The 85th percentile speed, which is the speed limit, you, speed you base speed limits on generally. Um, it was actually 28 miles per hour in each direction. On the bottom half, closer to Saiwanoi, um, the average speed in both directions was 21, 22 miles per hour, and the 85th percentile speed was 24 to 25. So that means 85% of the traffic 
was going 24 miles per hour or slower. 15% um, would have been going over. And the detailed charts in there say how many were going at what speed and such. Um, so those are the speed measurements that were done. The second set of counts that we were asked to look at were uh, pedestrian and bicyclists um, on the road. So we did those for a few hours on a sunny Saturday plus on a weekday after school. On the weekday, we counted um, 19 pedestrians and then there were three bicyclists. Um, those places came, they were in both directions. The three went one way, then they came back. Um, and on the Saturday, there were 13 pedestrians, no bicyclists, but um, there was one scooter with two kids riding on the, on the scooter. Another time on one of the earlier counts on the Saturday, we did see a family of three riding, riding the bicycles. Again, they went in both directions when we were there. Um, so those are the pedestrian and bicycle counts. Um, the next thing we were um, to look at is what improvements could, modifications could possibly be done here. And I'll enlarge this. Um, and yeah, what would you like? So there's a few and some of these were recommended by the town planner or the town's traffic consultant and they asked us to look into it based in some of our meetings and um, the highway superintendent was also involved in some of these meetings. Um, what we're recommending based upon those discussions was at Ridge Street to provide larger signage um, directing um, people on Highland to the Tucko schools to use Ridge Street. There is a small sign there um, that's not that visible and the recommendation was to increase the sign to get more people to use Ridge Street because it's wider and it's more direct route to the schools. Um, second one was add speed radar signs um, along Beach Street and so we show them here both on the northern and the upper part um, one per direction. Those are the speeds that measure what your speeds are It'll show the speed you're going so the driver's aware of what they're going at. Other people can also see what speed they're going at. And the newer ones now can record so the town could collect that data of what the speeds are, are measured at consistently on the road. Um, the next one is at the intersection of uh, Beach and, and Rose. Um, there's a couple recommendations there. One is to clear some of the vegetation because when you're coming out of rows looking to your right, uh, there is vegetation that blocks your sight distance for vehicles coming up from Siwanoi. Uh, second one uh, was a suggestion to add stop signs at the intersection. Um, we can either have two stop signs, so maintain the one on rows and have one on beach coming um, basically southbound to eastbound, um, so from Highland towards Siwanoi. Um, and then possibly a third one in the opposite direction. The issue with the third one is because of the driveway locations and such. If we put a stop sign in, there's state laws, there's no parking within 30 feet of the stop sign, so you would lose one parking space up there. Um, and um, the other recommendation that was discussed at the meeting, so what we have is to prohibit parking on the south side of Beach Street from Rose to Siwanoi, and we'll get, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, all these are recommended um, with or without the project. Um, they're basically based on existing conditions. The project really doesn't have much impact on any of those. Um, but those are all recommended. Um, Bob, can I see this? So, um, Hudson Engineering, the site engineers on the project, did the 
parking analysis along um, this stretch of Beach Street, um, looking at different scenarios. One is to have all parking on the north side based upon existing conditions. Um, with that, you get um, 19 parking spaces. Um, the second scenario is if the, um, oh, I'll go back to, okay. if the vehicles are staggered um, on each, so they're on each side, because if they can't be parked right across from each other, nobody's getting through. Um, if you stagger them, you, you get less parking spaces um, because of the way you have to leave the gaps in between. Um, so, and then um, the third part of this was to look at the on-site parking. Um, you can get actually um, a total of 56 parking spaces on site. Um, not that 56 are going to be used, but just because each driveway can handle a minimum of four cars, some could handle six. You could add two cars in each garage, and there will be six parking spaces along the um, east side of, this, of the cul-de-sac. There will be no parking within the cul-de-sac itself. So what happens then is with that, um, and just counting the on-street parking, not counting any of the driveway parking, um, they actually take the existing number of 19 parking spaces. You would lose five because of the driveways um, that are added um, and the area you need for that. And you can, it, we lose the five, but we'll add six spaces on street that could be used by anybody on the, on the cul-de-sac. So any of the residents in the area can use them. So we are actually increasing the number of on-street parking spaces as a result of this. These, those were the traffic issues we were asked to take a look at. If there's any other comments? Mr. Chairman, I, I just had one clarification point. Sure. On the remedial measures you had indicated in your um, memo or the mitigating measures. One of them involves uh, trimming back of vegetation. Yes. Uh, my question is, I couldn't find a photo of this specific area. I would just want to make sure that the vegetation you're talking about is on the public right of way as opposed to it's a homeowner's, uh, you know, vegetation or trees and how that, because it could relate to an enforcement issue uh, that we need to know about. Okay. I could Get that to, if you could. To Lucas. Yep. I, I had a question about the the traffic study, the independent traffic study that was apparently principally designed to uh, to measure um, speeds and um, non-vehicular traffic, pedestrians and bicycles, and that. No, we we did the non-vehicular because yep. mm -hmm. that equipment can't count that per se. Um, yep. The speeds were done through the tubes on the roads and such, um, and that was done. Okay, by but the the um, and I, I just took a look at it now. I hadn't looked at the uh, at the, the the charts before this, but uh, it looks like these measurements were taken over a period of a number of consecutive days that included. <coughs> Included weekend days and included yes. like you know yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday the first one was of last to be week. Two weeks, but the, as I said, the tubes got so yeah. this is about a week. Okay, so about a week. It, now, in terms of the, it, it looks like there's a, a fairly consistent tally during the week of motor vehicles, uh, if, if I'm reading this correctly, of somewhere in the 550 to 600 range, 500 to 600 range, during the periods of, and, and this is this is an all day measurement, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they show. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's broken down by hour, right? Um, did Did anyone uh, take the time to compare those measurements with certain of the measurements that you took that date back to March and date back to uh, some other periods yeah, of time? See if they're consistent. They're relatively consistent. Some were higher. Some were lower than than the initial counts. But then some of the other counts we did were 
were slightly different too. Okay, because I know we, one of the issues that we um, we heard about a couple of meetings ago was um, a questioning as to the the accuracy of certain of the numbers that had been included. You know, n n nobody was suggesting that that the numbers were fudged, but that they didn't. Uh, there was a suggestion that they, you know we're people who live in the neighborhood, we know these numbers look low, and when we did a count, the numbers were higher. I just want to find out, it, it, yeah. and I think you've answered the question already, but is there anything in the data that you've assembled um, that's part of this report uh, that, that, that changes in any way the, uh, the numbers that you had previously presented as compared to the numbers that no, some of the neighbors No, there's nothing that would change the findings. As I said, you know, traffic fluctuates every day, so sometimes, you know, it goes a little up, sometimes it drops a little bit. Um, but we made sure they were on good, good weather days and, and um, you know, we double-checked them with, with our numbers. Okay, thanks. Is it fair to characterize the speeds on the two different portions of beach as the a little bit higher on the portion near Highland, and the lower they it, slow down a little bit? It's slightly higher. Um, the average speed is um, is two, two miles per hour higher. The oh, okay. 85th percentile speed was, was four <coughs> miles per hour higher. So on those, it is sli it's slightly higher up top. It's still below the speed limit. Um, and one of the things we were asked to look at is, and this part of this was traffic calming measures, uh, speed humps and speed tables really wouldn't have too much effect on it because of the slower speeds they're already at. A speed hump could lower it slightly if you added a speed hump, but that brings some other issues in terms of on-street parking, the highway superintendent would have to look at it, um, and they do create some noise and such. Right. Just in general, um, if you were to change the speed limit, reduce the speed limit to maybe 25, something like on California Road, what would, hap what would you think would happen to the speeds? Would they uh, reduce proportionately? If you change the speed limit, I wouldn't say it reduces proportionally because we've done various speed limit studies for changing it to 25 for various municipalities in Westchester. Um, it will drop it a little bit, but people drive at the speed they're, they're comfortable at. So yep. they may drop at one or two miles per hour. You would then ha you would have some others. Um, on the top part would be over the, the set speed limit there. On the bottom half, actually, <clears throat> you're still at 85% is below 25 miles per hour. Right, they're going slow already. Yeah, in, in my experience, the, the, the tightness of the road is what dictates the speed because people probably don't feel safe driving at above that speed, um, whatever the speed limit is. It's just like if you're driving on the Major Deegan you, yeah. and you're going 55 miles an hour, it, it feels like you're going, I, I'm only imagining what it would like to be going 75 miles an hour, but it feels like you're going 75. And so people drive it with their feeling the yeah, I, I think it's the road conditions that do that, um, and I don't, I, I don't know that it makes a large difference. Um, so there were four measures you put forth. One is the sign, the Tucko School sign. The one that's there right now is that little green sign, right? It's On a the, small sign that nobody yeah, yeah. sees. What would, the, what would be the nature of the sign that would put there, approximate size? You know, would it be big enough where people are actually going to see it, or I guess that's up to... It would, it would be up to the town of how... You know, you don't want it. It's actually going to help. Don't want right? it too big. You don't want to sign it. Okay, cool. But it's easier to read. And, and the thought is that Ridge is much better equipped to handle that traffic, and that's why you have the sign in the first place. Yeah, and this is brought up by the town planner as, mm -hmm. as one of the. But how do you get people to use it? They're so used to going down the beach right now. Once they see the sign, they will come, or. It will. We could get some people to start to come, noticing, oh, that's. A more practical route. Um, so more direct route. People not familiar with the school, it also helps in that regard. Okay. As far as the stop signs at Rose, you're saying three three stop signs probably aren't necessary because the two will be enough. You you can have two or three. Either situation works. Um, 
the only issue with three, which is what's recommended by the town's traffic consultant, is because of the location of that one driveway, you would lose um, oh, one, right, you use parking. You'd lose one parking space up top there. Yeah, right. But actually around that curb, there's no parking permitted by code, but there's no signs that say that there. Okay. So that's the stop signs. Number four is the prohibiting parking. Can you show us the 19 spots? If they go, are they but, on By that the way, point? if I could just interject on that, on that specific point, did you just say that One. the, if you added a stop sign, it would, um, because it would, you can't have parking within 30 feet of that stop sign, it would eliminate a space that is currently used as a parking space, but which technically shouldn't be used? Is that what you, uh, I heard you say? I'd have to check the house number because, but in the town code, there it says there's no parking on that side going around the curve on, um, on beach opposite rows there. Um, that's in the town code. Okay, sorry, Mr. Chairman. The, yeah. the, so the 19 spots you'd have if you were to only park on the north side, are they shown on that layout? We're getting there. Oh, okay. You're looking. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't mean to. Just give us the thumbs up when you're ready. This, uh, do you want this? Well, this was um, the 20 spots in the future, this plan here. Um, so there, there's five spaces. Um, in One, this area two, right here, five, yep. Um, three, there would be three more spaces right here. There's actually room for six parking spaces along um, along this stretch of um, beach uh, east of Taiwanoi, and then there'd be six more spaces along the cul-de-sac stem there. So six, three, five, and 20. six. Is that right? Six, five, three, and yeah, six. So that's yeah, so that's the 20 spots. 20 spots. Okay. What, what are the, how many are on the street right now if, that they that use? The most we can squeeze in looking at the different combinations of all on one side are staggered was 19. No, I mean currently in whatever configuration the residents use, do they yeah. mine the whole street with cars? The most we could if everyone lined up perfectly would be 19 right 19. now. Oh, I see. In the existing conditions, right. right. How We've never it? seen close to that many. Right? And does that include the spot next to the stop sign that we were discussing? That would Or include, does not? Yeah, they it both, includes it. both okay. calculations, yeah. Got it, okay. And it, that was why the stem from Beach does not have a stop sign, the short piece, because if they do put a stop sign in, then they would lose one to two parking spaces of that okay. stretch. So I guess my question is, if we were to limit parking to the north side to the residents, would they lose the spots that they're used to using there? It sounds like the answer is no, right? Uh, there are some spots that will be lost because of the driveway and, and yeah. the cul-de-sac, but the overall number of spaces would actually increase by one. Because you're using the, spree stops, they're using the spots on the cul-de-sac? Right. Yes. Right, that's why it's increased. How far is the furthest one from the... Well, the you could, oh, uh, Walking distance. <laughs> For me, that's a tough one, okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry. This is the it's first. five spots, so it's 100 feet. Yeah. This is the it's first spot feet. right here, so mm -hmm. I mean, so that's in come across the street. 20 feet plus cars are 20 feet, so that's 120 yeah, feet. So. The furthest spot um, north on the map I measured is 150 feet. You'd have to walk. To that would make sense, right? 50 from the street and then 100 that, that, That's the top cars. spot. Right, right. That's the uh, most you'd have to walk, yeah. Right, five cars is 20, uh, 100 feet, I guess. Okay, cool. You said mentioned something about a staggered layout. Like, it sounds kind of unorthodox. Is it something that you recommend? Just no, that was what we were saying. On the, we looked at that. You cannot fit as many cars when you stagger them on each side as opposed to if you have them all on the one side. Not that you propose that, that's just a No, we, yeah, we were, at, we were asked to look at that as, yep. oh, you were? Okay. as a, another possibility. And, and that's not even considering the issues with the fire engine or anything like that. I was oh, just right. trying okay. to lay out. 
Oh, and the spots that shouldn't be used for anything because of emergency vehicles are any part of this count, obviously. There just uh, should be no parking at that portion of the street. Well, right where you make the left off of Sirenoy. Sorry. That's a well, the, right, so there's some, the fire department came and said, oh, my gosh, you can't park on the right. south side. So the make fire the department asked us to eliminate the spaces right here in this area right across the street from the cul-de-sac stem because if a car is parked in this spot right here. Oh, they can't park. Um, for, the, for the truck to get in, he needs this area to, to turn into, um, to make the turn into this, the, the stem of the cul-de-sac. So if you were to go with the layout you have for parking, you would control the spots by putting signage that clearly marks where you can and cannot park, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Saturday, pedestrians, bicycles. And when you say vehicles, that includes trucks, that includes delivery trucks? Yes. Got it. So the comment you made about 19 pedestrians, that's in a particular day, the numbers you gave that, us? That, that was uh, from three to five, so a two hour period, there were 19. Oh, I see. So, some were people walking their dogs, um, some were you know, going to their car that's across the street, some uh -huh. were people just walking in the area. Okay. Got it, I don't have any other questions. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay, ask them all. No questions. Cool. Mr. Gurley, we'd like to opine on the study or just say uh, I'd feel much more comfortable if you tell us what you think about this. Okay, I guess. Uh, Philip Greeley, Collier's Engineering and Design. Um, we reviewed the information that Mr. Dempsey submitted. I think the questions that the board uh, asked covered some of the items we had. We have, you know, our recommendations would be uh, to make these mitigation measures part of the site plan approval, uh, have the applicant, you know, uh, install the signage. Um, in terms of the parking uh, restrictions that would involve the town board to make that change. I think based on the information that was presented, um, you know, today when you have people parking on either side as presented last meeting, the fire trucks and emergency vehicles have some difficulty getting through there. So there is logic to this uh, proposal. The additional spaces on the cul-de-sac, uh, you know, in terms of the fact that the driveways and the garages in the individual units, you know, so sometimes you'll have a, a, a dwelling unit that's built and the driveway is so short you can't and people will park on the street. These particular layouts do provide for adequate, as he indicated, four to six spaces, you know, off street parking. Uh, so the spaces on street, yeah, they'll be used at times when there's gatherings or parties, so, but typical for any neighborhood. So I, I, I think the shifting to the, of the parking to one side makes sense. That one space in question, I think the two versus the three stop signs can work. Um, his comments about the other traffic calming measures, speed tables because of these speeds would not be effective. Those are typically used when you have speeds excess of 35 miles an hour and you want to bring them down into the range that these speeds are already. Uh, I, as you indicated, the people tend to drive the speeds that they feel comfortable with. Some people drive a little faster. The speed advisory signs, the dynamic signs that they're identified, they do help because sometimes people don't realize that they're going a little faster than they should. Uh, the p possible reduction to 25 may have some slight effect if it's done in combination with these types of signs. If you didn't have the signs, people are still going to go the same speed no matter what the speed limit is, unless it's enforced all the time. 
with these uh, dynamic signs, people, if they see that it's posted at 25, they may bring it down a little bit, but not significantly. Um, the speed humps will bring speeds even lower, but with the pedestrians and bicyclists, it, it becomes a little, it, they're typically used where you don't have any pedestrian or bicycle activities, um, you know, where it's just really motor vehicles, so. And I think those are really the, the, the key points. I think they've addressed everything else in terms of uh, the data. And we did look at their counts compared to before. There's some variation, but nothing that changes the results of, you know, their analysis. Okay, uh, thank you. I have a question for you on the, uh, when you, you said the two or three stop signs and the removal of the one space. Yes. Um, do you have a decided preference one way or, or the other on that? If it wasn't for parking, I prefer to have an always stop, three stop signs. Um, the, I think the, uh, the, in, the, in the case here, the, the volumes are fairly similar. So there's support for that, because you don't want to use stop signs for speed control. But looking at the volumes, it makes sense. And I, my typical preference is a three, an all-way stop, because then there's no indecision. Uh, but understanding the concern about losing additional parking, um, I think that the two would work fine. So. OK. Thank you. And, I, and looking at. The, the, the plans had identified several areas where there were some site distance improvements. So the site plan had for their own access drives certain improvements. And what I saw in the, uh, the uh, field looks like the branches that they're talking about pruning. So it's not just pure clear cutting would be within the right of way. And I think he can demonstrate, you know, on the final plan so that there would not be affecting anybody's property, per se. How do these dynamic signs work? I mean, I know physically how they work, but they go up and say they're indefinitely, or once you feel they've done their purpose, they're removed? Once they're in place, they should, should stay there. They're not a tempor a temporary signs. They become part of the landscape. And in terms of, I, I don't know whether what they've identified would be solar or whether they have to be direct power. There's both, both types. It really depends on the sun exposure, whether the solar would, would work. But they're both effective, and they, they've, the technology has improved significantly in terms of the uh, life of these. I guess I could ask Mr. Dempsey, but they're not very pretty. Do they make nice ones? <laughs> Well, the, the, the size of the signs could be kept general, appropriate yeah. for the neighborhood. There are varying sizes of these. Um, yeah, but okay, I'll leave it what I'm Again, yeah. you know, that, that's the problem is you, you look at signing and you get to a point where you over-sign things. Right. Um, I think the concerns and the fact that we have the pedestrians there I think this is a, an important consideration to, to do this because, especially if it's someone from out of the area, a, lo a lot of the times you find in the neighborhood, the people that are speeding actually live in the neighborhood. I, I know in my neighborhood that's what the studies found. Uh, we had speed tables installed and I think it was like 75% of the people that were speeding were from the surrounding neighborhood. Um, but I, I think, you know, considering the pedestrian activities, I, it, it's an appropriate measure. I could go back to Mr. Dempsey, but since you know, I'll keep asking you questions. Is part of the recommendation is putting appropriate uh, markings on the pavement also? Yes. So there's enough markings that there's a big white line, you stop. And Where you have your stop signs, you would have a, a solid white stop bar. Um, there were, at one of the meetings, there was also a... Uh, comment about people not obeying the stop sign on Siwanoi at Beach. So I think there, you know, a stop sign ahead current standard uh, would be appropriate. There is a sign, but I think the, the current standard. So that would be one thing that we would add to that list that he's provided. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Are we good up here? Yeah, no questions. Great. So this is an open public hearing. So um, uh, open public hearing. So whoever would like to have comments, please come forward, state your name, address, and take it away. Good evening, uh, Rose Brescia, 205 Beach Street. I've been here before, you have a long agenda, I'm gonna be very brief. Um, couple of main concerns, as usual, water management. I love the optimism of engineers. We have a problem, what are we gonna do with all this water? And they do their formulas and their calculations and their charts and they come back and they say, here go, we solved it. And then reality hits, just like that storm we had at the end of April. And I've, I know you've seen the pictures because other residents have mailed them in. Um, Highland Avenue, completely inundated. And that's the system that this is supposed to be part of. That's what we're supposed to be putting our water into for some of these houses. So absolutely did not work. Um, second thing, the traffic study. I've been puzzling over the statement in the study that says, uh, I'm gonna quote that the offset variance request, the key consideration for allowing the variance is there will be few left turns out of the proposed cul-de-sac because Beach Street becomes a dead end. Now, in essence, that's the truth. However, that statement is misleading because before you get to the dead end, you come to, high, to Siwanoi. So you have to make that right. So people are gonna be making a left out of the cul-de-sac and immediately, within a very short distance, making a right onto Siwanoi Boulevard. Now, if we're gonna park 19 cars over there, that's gonna be a problem, even without the cars parked there. Um, it's presented as if there's going to be few cars there, and the truth is it's actually gonna be more cars there because you're going to be making the left, you're going to be making a right. You're not going down that dead end. There's only three houses down the dead end. People are turning around, I, I would say three or four times a week, the poor pe people that live at the end of that street. Someone's in their driveway turning around because they think it's a street. Completely ignore that dead end sign. So I, I, I think that needs to be corrected in the report. Beach Street, yes, is a dead end, but before you get to the dead end, you get to Siwanoi. And that's where people are gonna be making the turn and that's where you're gonna have the traffic. And yes, if you have another sign that says Tuckahoe Schools up on on Highland or maybe down on Rose and maybe that's where people are going to be redirected but we see it all the time deliveries to the school school buses people going back and forth to the school they can continue to use Beach Street and Siwanoi they're not going to change over to Ridge Street because that's what they're used to doing I mean the milk truck goes by twice a day down to the school um, I'm not even going to talk about the 19 spots I, I that is not even we just saw you can't, you, you, 19 spots on the street. The, the street, the photo you just saw was someone parked and someone trying to get past. So how are we supposed to have cars parked there? People get out of the driveway and then other people coming the other direction. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, are there gonna be more traffic studies in the future? Because there's black tape all over the street where the, where the wires were, is that something that's gonna come up in those two locations? So where the, where the wires were, the tape is still down in the street. I don't know if that's gonna be reused or that dissolves, I don't know, but it, it's, it's a mess. It should be cleaned up. Um, and, and that's basically it. One last time, I'm not, we, we don't object to development of this property. It's a great piece of property. This is not the right design for it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman. Before we continue with the next um, public statement, I did have a, a thought that maybe uh, Dr. Greeley could address or somebody else could address, and that is that even if you direct traffic towards Ridge going to the, the Tuckahoe schools and you divert traffic that way, and it, the signage that you put is successful in doing that, the, the vehicles, school buses, parent cars, deliveries, whatever they are, and they take that route, 
they're not going to make a U-turn coming back. They are typically going to go through by the school and come back on Siwanoi towards this development. That's the natural route of egress, I believe. And I don't know if any of that signage is going to take that into consideration. You can divert cars coming in to go towards Ridge, but coming out once they've gone to the school or gone to wherever they're going, it seems to me that's the natural way out of the neighborhood. So there's still going to be that traffic pattern coming around. So I don't know if that was addressed or considered. Right. I think the thought would be that if you're diverting the incoming traffic, you're doing something to, to mitigate the problem uh, because it's a problem now. Um, it, and it will be a problem whether we approve this application or not. It will continue to be a problem. Uh, so anything you can do to, in, in this instance, uh, lessen the incoming traffic towards the school is an improvement. That's the way I view it. That, that's all I just wanted yeah. to make. a good observation. Mm -hmm. Could you get them to not turn around and just keep going mm -hmm. straight? That's just way out of control to keep them not make them just go past the, the high school and go on the streets over there. Yeah, it's too circuitous. Yeah, it really is. There's no, yeah. no way to get out of there. Yeah, you know, and I, th I think, I know, I know that this public comment, but with cars exiting the cul-de-sac, um, just I guess to go along with the comment that was just made, it it also seems quite circuitous for somebody to make the left out of the cul-de-sac to go to Highland or Route 22 or to California Road, right? You think you would make a right out of the cul-de-sac then to continue on beach and then go to Highland or down Rose or one of those other streets to, to hit those main, those main avenues. I guess also because the homes are, would then be located in East Chester School District, so there would be really no need for them to go in that direction on a daily basis. But I don't know if that was part of the study or not. Yeah, it, it was most will go right, but yeah. to be conservative, and this was based right. on our initial um, scoping and such. Right. We actually sent 70% of the cars coming out of the driveway, out of the cul-de-sac to go left to be conservative Got it. because of this. So we were overly conservative in that regard. Um, but yes, most will go right, go beach up to Highland, and then out to 22 or you know, <coughs> back to the huts or whichever. With the signage, as the board member said, we feel any, and this originally came from the town planner, but we agreed with the, any additional reduction would help in that regard. It will mainly help people going in. Um, during the school hours, they're set on a certain pattern that the school sends out of how they're, they're supposed to go and to drive around the school for pick up and drop off. During other hours though, you may have more people returning that way. You know, a lot of people just use ways now and such too, so whatever that tells them. Yeah, it, just uh, to address one comment that came up about the dead end, is there something that could be done to prevent people from going into that dead end? I imagine more signs, more stripes or something there like was, that? We talked about additional signage, um, but they didn't weren't too in favor of it. Um, the other thing we talked who's, about was- Who's they? Some of the, one, of, one or two of the residents that spoke last night. You could add another do not enter sign on the other side of, of the, um, so you see it from uh, both directions. Um, oh. And then the other thing we talked about is you can put what, paint cat tracks, which is basically the double yellow line going oh, the from there the to the other one. So it shows you should be turning there. How do those hold up, though, with uh, the weather that we have in the winter time? With uh, uh, well, yeah. th that would just be through paint, though. That wouldn't be oh, paint. Okay. Yeah, you know, just the cat tracks is puzzle, but you're doing the cat eyes, which yes. is reflecting. Um, they can be done too, but that you have to be careful. And they have to be well installed. You can't have it like in Florida yeah. where they're all sticking up. They'd have to be flush with the pavement. Got it. Is it worth considering something over there, or it's sort of non, a non-issue? You mean in, in the, on the dead end, you mean? Yeah, is it worth addressing that and asking for that, or is it really just as you said, it's really, really not an issue? At least not to the residents over there. Right. Um, 
I mean, it's a, the paint can be put on that would go between the two stop bars on, um, on Siwanoi and Beach, and you could put that in. Uh, okay, got it. All right, thank you. We uh, still have the public hearing open. Additional comments? <coughs> Richard Slavanko, famous, familiar face, Turner Beach Street. I'm going to start with last point first is that we've now opened the Broxville Manor sign shop. Sign on every corner, bigger one, new one. Sign, sign, that's, you know, there's a song many years ago, my generation, sign, signs everywhere, sign. And what I noticed from my video captures is these are the same cars every day, same times. You know, we're, we're creatures of habit. So these now people are unaware. It's a small number of streets. It's a very limited amount of area. They're making choices, constant choices. It's not a misinformation or a lack of, of knowledge about what their options are. They're choosing the pattern they have. And these other measures are likely, if not inconsequential, closest to that. Um, I apologize for what I, I was planning to speak on. I'll be a little more organized, but. For the moment, I'm going to skip around a little bit because it's in response to things said tonight. One of the things that doesn't seem to be an issue is speed. I think the pneumatic tube studies are just there saying that at the 85 percentile, which was uh, regarded as the speed at which you kind of direct your attention, are below even what the, the, the lower threshold of 25 over on California Avenue. Therefore putting additional visibility to speed and so forth doesn't seem to be uh, the advantage. You guys don't have your name tags tonight, but the gentleman right here has made some very key points about you, 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 you travel at the speed, you know these roads, you travel at the speed that you're, you're used to in this, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a habit. But what's interesting is that overall speed is not an issue. The tubes that were placed of much, that are called position two, on the study uh, that was supplied, the raw data that was submitted on the 20th of this month, they were positioned at 202 Beach on the tree right next to my property, 200, and then extended over across almost exactly where the radius would be for the proposed uh, cul-de-sac. It's interesting. The speed was set at the 85th percentile, 21 to 22 miles an hour. They have a three car lengths to go. They've gone three car lengths to that point, meaning they're already up to 20 plus miles an hour. Not that they're gonna go super fast at any point, but they're accelerating fast, right by that development, right where the people will be turning left. If you, look, if you work in the city, you're not going right to go to Highland, you're going left to get to Cross County. You wanna to go to, for example, in, you know, the spring, I'm not going right, I'm going left, and go down Pondfield so I can get down by Midland and all that and get on to the, to the uh, Sprain exit. There's many reasons why I'm going left, not right, so Rose's point was absolutely correct and valid. Um, <clears throat> the point about, we keep talking about parking on, on beach, which is a whole nother issue, and, and I'll, I'll only address something right now. I have great trouble getting out of my driveway. I'm generally considered a very good driver. And I have to do like a five point turnaround maneuver to get out of my driveway if somebody's parked behind me. It's one of these many spaces that are so available to talk about. Most of my neighbors are courteous enough not to, because they can see it's so tight. And now my driveway goes down on a grade, so I don't have where I could just, you know, drive on the grass a little bit or I have some big extended area to move. I have limited distance to go out of the driveway, and if the car is there, i got to work. And thank God I have a backup camera, because it's real tight. And there's another guy next to me at 200, at 196, and then at 192, he's also got a grade, and he's got the same problem that I would have. So it, it, it sounds good, that mo much more than it is. In reality, right now, there's probably six good spaces. And, it, and and if you take the cul-de-sac out, there's probably four. 
and, out, and that takes away anything that was on the other side, and, and the, uh, the owners at 192 frequently park on the other side with their Jeep. Um, <clears throat> now, there was a comment by the uh, traffic generation, traffic engineer, I'll better say. Um, before I go there, let me go back to, to Simon I for a minute. Uh, there was a video provided by my neighbor at the corner, right off of the corner where San Juan Beach meet. And uh, Christina from 138 San Juan, uh, Marciano, you've, you've got a video from her. She sat one afternoon at the corner, just a sam one day sample, and you saw what was going on there. And it wasn't what the issue was going on at beach. It was, the issue was what was on Siwan, or these cars parked on both sides. None of this has been addressed on both sides, and there's people walking around the, the, uh, the corner there, and there's cars making very difficult turns with other you know, pedestrians and oncoming traffic. It's very treacherous. The other day, I was coming home, and Rose, who's the other person who could really sit in her, so she came out before I could get there. There was kids sitting on the curb I don't know if they were eating sandwiches or they were setting up a, a lemonade stand right next to that stop sign, but on the beach side. I mean, you're, you're like got a sign of hit me on me. Um, she got to them before I did. So people are just not necessarily understanding the, the, the dynamic of which we're making much more complicated and dangerous. Um, now I'm going to go back to the point I was just starting to make. The comment, some higher, some lower, again to, can I get your name? I don't want to keep calling Phil Nemesek. Phil, right, and you're an architect, right? That, you're an architect, right? I'm a lawyer. A lawyer, okay, <laughs> Phil. He's well. the very best type. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that. I gave you a chance to showcase it. Well, Phil, again, had an, another key uh, question for the traffic engineers. So how does this compare to what you've represented us and you've been continuing to say is proper to assess your your comments and, and decisions upon, he says some higher, some lower. Where I come from, my industry, where we test and we, we use you know, facts, uh, we have like a nice saying that we like to use, in God we trust, all others bring data. Well, how much higher, how much lower? And where does it matter and where does it does it? Where it does it? You'll recall in the traffic study, they focus on peak hour, peak AM, peak PM. And why would they do that? Because that's the greatest utilization of those. That's when everything's happening and, and, and you know, like with any situation, you want to look at worst case as, as being like your critical task. And this is your worst case. Some higher, some lower doesn't apply to that. They're all higher, a lot higher. For example, in the uh, PM hour on Thursdays, 46% higher than the highest PM hour that they were telling you about, that they did all these repeated studies for, and they really got it, and I got the number for you. It's definitely 50. Well, 73. Well, that's an outlier. Well, the day before was 69. I also have a 73 count on 68, just another day. Well, what about the mornings, which I, I've been railing about? How are you taking samples in the, right in the week of, of Thanksgiving in the winter and calling that representative? It's just not. Well, on 6-8, which I provided a video for, which is very recently, we had 89 cars. 89 is a very different number than 64. And that's at the peak time. And then there was observations about uh, uh, Mr. Herbert asked for, you know, some qualitative understanding of what the dynamics on the street, because you guys are all being alerted to this is, this is a, a real situation here. Before we had the street, before we had another driveway, in between, the new street, the new driveway, and then the intersection too close, be less than 150 feet before all that. And they were there for just two hours on a, on a given Saturday, random time, and then another time undisclosed during the week. Well, if you watch kids going to, to schools at that 7.30 to 8.30 peak hour, they're climbing all over the road. And it's the highest utilization time, and it's 30, 40% higher than he's claiming it. And you know, how many, how many pedestrians are, are at risk every day? High number. The observation- 34% higher based upon a study that- uh, 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 I, from Data I provided to you, plus they corroborated with their raw data, which I summarized for you. On the email of yesterday that I sent, I laid this all out, I have a copy of it here, 
where I put, I took their raw data and I just tallied it up. And bear, bear in mind, it would be higher, the raw data, because they have it at the whole hour. I misspelled in my name. I apologize. I forgot the W. But the peak periods, I'm, I've measured so many times, I know now. Peak period, 7.30 to 8.30. Next peak period is 2.30 to 3.30. Those measurements that they're, they're representing are on the whole hour, seven to eight, eight to nine. So we're not getting the actual peak. So these are undercounting, and still they're blowing their numbers out of the water, 46% higher in the afternoon as an example. So their data shows it, but I've been saying this all along. I've been showing videos I provided to the traffic and uh, consultant for, hired by the city, but it shows, you know, camera trips on every time a car goes by. You can see which direction they're going. 89 cars, 7.30 to 8.30, last two weeks ago. And I get accounts over 80 all the time, always over 70. It's not 64. Um, so, and, and I provided that to, to the city. I provided that to the planning board. Um, it's available. There's a link there right next to it in that email. But don't, don't listen to me. That, look at their own data. Their own data is telling you. <clears throat> Um, uh, that's all I'm going to do in response to uh, what was presented tonight. Now, I'm going to want to show some visuals, and, and I would like to ideally talk about it, so maybe just yeah, Comes you have to take the microphone so the record can hear you, and if you want to use the easel, yes. so they can Yes, yeah, that's, I'm just making sure that's okay. I don't want to get in trouble with them on camera and everything else, and then... Do you have a real problem? With what? Um, I have it on my email. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, I have it on. I'll see if he's got a copy. Yeah. What I've put before you is the representation we've seen numbers of times, a lot of times in response to things that I've said. I think it's from Hudson Engineers, or I don't remember exactly their name. He's not here today. But this, this graphic, the fuzzy one, was taken from a screen capture that I think we've all been seen where they say, look, it's, it's typical, all those uh, cul-de-sacs, that's, that's the way we do it here in East Chester. That's what he's been, been saying. I pointed out at some point via an email graphic, you know, that's not the case, but I don't think it really makes the point the way I'm going to now. So this is the area he's showing us. This is East Chester, per se. And the red uh, dots that you see, or the red pins, represent anything with more than one home that's not a multifamily in a cul-de-sac. Even if it's not a cul-de-sac, if it's a dead end with like two or three houses. So I'm giving the benefit of, of the doubt that this is a cul-de-sac for things that really aren't a cul-de-sac. But you can see the alignment is very similar to what he has here, the two, the two. I'm giving three, he says, two. The, the, the five in here, the two tight ones there. Now I'm going to subtract a couple ones with your permission, because this is uh, right off of uh, these two here, or right off of uh, 119. And it's basically traffic control. They basically put a, you know, some some uh, walkway in between it and a little dirt, so that you don't use the you know people cutting through. So this is really not a cul-de-sac. This is a traffic mitigation measure. So it, it 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 really isn't fair. I'm going to pull that one out. So here we are with the. Oops, that was the wrong one. That actually is the Tuckahoe one, and that does belong. I don't know if I the off. Okay. What I was trying to pull off was this one here off of 119. So that's now a cleaned up model tracking exactly with what he's showing you. Now. I put my hand over this area right at Tuckahoe Road and what would be uh, Beach Street. How many do we really see? 
And how many of them have four in a row or five in a row that he's calling typical? None, zero, right? If I put my hand over here, how many do we see that has four in a row or five in a row? None. One of them happens to be the new development. I take that off, that's not there yet. Now how many of these do we see if I put my hand over the Tuckahoe? Zero, three in a group here and there. All we have is this one right here. And it, it's out the outlier. But if you take a satellite view, if you drive there, it's very green. It's not what we have here or what's going to be here. It just happens to be some big parcels. You're going to talk about one tonight, Tuckahoe, 15 Tuckahoe. These were over a long, big, wide stretch. So these things are like acre in between. So even if you build them up heavy, there's still a lot of green space left. Not the, the case of what we're having here. So the point that I'm trying to make is this is an outlier. What they're proposing here is not typical of the area, certainly not typical of Bronxville Manor, because in Bronxville Manor, I want to make sure I identify it correctly, this is the one, the one, that's in Bronxville Manor. Here I have the immediate adjoining area, hopefully artistically presented, but more importantly presented so you can get your bearings of where you are. Of This is the corner, that's 202 Beach. This is the corner of Simonoy, taken from this, across the, the corner. This is looking down that dead end street that we were just talking about. And this is now at 196 Beach, looking down, there's the parked car that gets sideswiped all the time, which is almost exactly the back of this car would be the, the uh, cul-de-sac exit. This is what it looks like. Nice neighborhood. Anybody would want to move there. Not a lot of signs. Notice that. Not a lot of signs. One of the attributes. It's not the Bronx. Not saying it's anything wrong with the Bronx, but it's different. It's a different character, different neighborhood. That's what we have currently. This is a, more or less what we're talking about coming. Where's this, what I'm showing you, is D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio is a very similar concept of development that's what's being proposed here. This is one, two, three. This might be the same house, it's just huge. One, two, three. I see three or four I'm looking at there. And that one little screenshot. And this is two houses, the roof lines merging. This is a very different character of neighborhood, dramatically different. There's nowhere we have a succession of 3,500 square foot homes, not four of them, not five of them, not eight of them. This is a 100-year storm? No. It is a 50-year storm? No. It's two inches over 24 hours. Two inches. 2.14 to be exact. 100-year storm is 9.17 inches over 24 hours. This was four inches of rain over 48 hours. That's water running in a river out of the Ambrosia with all the 100-year systems that are so infallible. That's water flying out in a river. This is, these are the best representations because it's taken from video, which you were provided by 138 uh, side one, Christine and Marciano mentioned earlier. But the point being is that the, what people keep talking about, that this is a very different area, this is the current state of the art. I sent a video in about this, and I showed you my system, which is 50-year storm rated, Saturate, this is like probably at least one every other month saturation, a 50-year storm. 
we don't, it's, it's completely inappropriate. I showed you my neighbor, uh, uh, 192 of the Mancusos, drying out their basement on the, on the, pad, on the uh, driveway. They also have a brand new, actually two brand new uh, dry wells, also 50 year rated, I assume, because they wouldn't get approved these days if it wasn't at least that. I showed you in the video the pool that's still in there the next day. So if this is 50 years, 100 years, that much better, and it's gonna handle all this water in this area? No, it's just coming down. That's why that road was shut down that day. We're covering more and more surfaces with systems that cannot handle the level of water that's already there, plus what's coming from the sky. I'll, I'll read from two items that came in today to your facilities about the 15 Tuckahoe uh, development, and I, I'm just going to highlight them for the fact is they, they're right on point. One is from uh, a woman named Gail Stewart. Stewart, she may be here. Um, she wrote you this afternoon at 517, and she said, and she lives at 23 Tuckahoe Avenue. Water has always been a problem on our property. By the way, she's lived there with her family since 1926, so they're, they're not new here. They kind of know what's going on. Water has always been a problem on our property. This is a very high water table here. Dig down four feet and you hit water. And it's also clay, by the way. I mean, this, this is not soil that drains. She continues on later. It's still very wet back there and puddles when it rains. I have a sump pump basement that runs 24 seven. Another one that came in today was actually a repost of, uh, from Maria, I'm gonna say it's on, Anna Bean, I'm trying, because I'm Slovenko, I try harder, but it's, I think that's how it goes. And it was to Margaret Yule before in, 2020, uh, in 2021. And she's, when the, we were last looking at 15 Takahoe, and she's just had that forwarded back, and she writes, there are serious infrastructure issues that plague the neighborhood as a whole, and significantly on Takahoe Avenue. To name a few, these include the sanitary sewer, the storm sewer, the main water lines, the high water table, and through traffic. These issues have not meaningfully, been meaningfully addressed by the town. In the meantime, stress on these infrastructure systems has continued to increase over the years. So I'm gonna leave it there. I mean, if, if, if this is truly a, uh, a deliberative body that cares about what's gonna happen longer term, I don't know how you can approve this project. I mean, that, that's my, you know, you're probably gonna close up the meeting for public discourse, you're probably gonna make a decision. I fear you're gonna make the wrong one, but I mean, that's how I'm gonna leave it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to leave you these graphics? Uh, no, you can, you can take them back, thank you. I didn't know if anybody had it. No, no, I don't have it yet. Any uh, further comments on this application? Hmm. So the public hearing is still open. No more comments on 203 Beach. Okay. Gentlemen, do we have any comments? Nope. The um, <clears throat> only thing I did we, did Mr. Chermelli or anyone else have any further discussions on potential um, water, management? water, yeah, water management issues? Is that? Yeah, we, we resolved that according to uh, Mr. Chermelli. I wrote okay. a memo saying that the issues had been worked out. Okay, yeah, I, I must have missed that memo. Are we talking about the I and I? No, not the I and I. That's oh. a, that's a sanitary sewer issue. Uh, yeah, right. that has not water. been worked out. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, but the the, water the standards the, are the standards. Right. Right. Okay. Also, uh, there's one other thing I just wanted to make clear for those watching at home. Uh, somebody tonight. 
um, mention the word parking variance. And I just want to be clear that this board does not address parking variances or issue variances. Uh, that is a zoning board issue uh, to the extent that any are needed. And if there's a rearrangement of parking spaces or signage, that is an issue for the town board, not this particular body. That's all I want to clarify. Oh, there was something I wanted to just bring up or, or note. As far as the 19 spaces and Mr. Slavenko's comment about backing up in the cars there, is that something that we could address at a later time? It seems like we're taking all the spots, but if they make life difficult for those folks that have to get out of their driveways, I mean, that doesn't have to be addressed right now. It has to be addressed. Well, I mean, you would, have to, to you would have to measure the space and see if there was adequate space. You know, depending on where cars park relative to the driveways. To the driveways, and that's something. Right, right. I mean. So does your study address people coming out of their driveways when we do those 19 spaces? Uh, with, with the 19 spaces, what we were showing is just what the maximum number of spaces that could be oh. there. Um, if someone is directly opposite a driveway, then the person would have to turn earlier and, and um, to make the turn to back out. Um, but it, that's a, it's an existing condition. We're not adding any on-street traffic, on-street parking in, in the area from the project, so we wouldn't be affecting that. Yeah, kinda, it's an existing condition. I don't want to, but I have to agree with you. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of <laughs> right. It's, it's an existing yeah. condition that's there now. You're not changing it. It is, but if part of the project is going to involve at some point in time directing that all of the tra all of the parking be on one side of the street versus uh, not on both sides of the street, then to the extent that people are coming out of their driveways on one side of the street, there's going to be more parking across from those driveways. But as it, as it exists right now, I don't know if there's any way around yeah, it, I, but, I mean, yeah. but there's I parking on both sides right now. So in theory, it could be even could worse. Be because you could have the two people parked on either side of your driveway and someone parked right, right behind you. That won't be a problem going forward if you eliminate the parking on one side of the street. But, you know. And, and on that note, the rest of Beach Street is parking on just on one side of the street from Island to Rose and then um, after Siwanoi. Yeah. It is the you mean between Rose and Highland? Yeah, between Highland and Rose is parking on once. And our recommendation for it is, is more a safety issue. It was demonstrated with the fire engine that if you have parking on both sides of the street, um, I think you start having serious issues if the fire engine just can't get through. Okay. Thank you. But that is, again, that's an existing condition. That has no, no rel relevance to this project. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing then. Uh, are we doing that? No. Oh, one more. oh back there. Come on up. I heard, I, 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 I heard yeah, that, yeah. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Christina Marciano. I live at 138 Siwanoi. I just want to bring to your attention one more time. Um, that I did witness, and I actually have it on my ring camera, that the existing conditions, there was a situation where there were two school buses. One was coming off of Siwanoi, making a left from Siwanoi to Beach, and one was making a right from Beach to Siwanoi. At the same time, one had to back up because the other one couldn't get through with the existing conditions. And at that time, there was only one car parked outside of Rosa's house, 203, 205, sorry, excuse me. That's with one car. So that wasn't even when there were supposedly going to be that many cars parked as they're requesting. Um, and also, um, when, if the cul de sac gets put in, when they're, where the cars are going to be parked on that side, and if you do not have any parking on the existing side that's allowed on beach. With the cars coming from Beach to Siwanoi, and if you're making a right-hand turn 
out of the cul-de-sac. There's no room for two cars. You cannot, if there's a car parked where they want it to be allowed to park, where that corner is, they'd have to come into oncoming traffic without being able to see, regardless of whether you cut any brush there, because the car is going to be parked there. And there's a potential for landscape trucks to be parked there, for delivery trucks to be parked there. Amazon cars always double park. There is going to be head-on collision there, guaranteed. I mean, I hope it never happens, but I, I guarantee it. So I, I just urge you to take another look at that situation. If you could, can we pull up the diagram one more time? I think that would help, yes. Uh, it, yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think I do, but it's better to point to it. If you could just take the microphone and you, this, no, it's okay. We want to get everything you're saying on the record. Well, why don't you stand by until he's got that up and then you can make your comments. Yeah. Uh, over there, use his mouse, please. <laughs> Can you show the driveway, like the overlay? Oh, it switched plan. Yeah, that's good. All right, it's a slow speed. <coughs> that's good enough. We can see everything. Okay, so where Rose meets Beach, meets Beach Street, it's much higher elevation than it is at the bottom of Siwaline Beach. So if they're making a right-hand turn out of that cul-de-sac, you have cars coming around the corner. Even if you put a stop sign in, they're going to be coming down the hill, and there is going to be zero visibility when you have a car parked there because the majority of the cars are not sedans. They are SUVs, they are delivery trucks, they are landscaping trucks. And I will tell you that in that, that corner there at, at um, Beach Street where it goes around to the right towards Highland, there are constantly park cars parked on that corner illegally. Constantly. Just so, for, for purposes of the record to sure. clarify it. So what you're saying is a car coming out of the cul-de-sac driveway cannot right. see or would have limited visibility looking up towards Rose? Correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure Correct. that yes. that's on the right. Right, right. Um, because of the height, too, of the street? Because of the height and because no one is going to abide by that corner. By, by They park there all the time. So, but even as this is, say everybody parks legally, the visibility is going to be non-existent. Due to all of the cars along there, or just that one car right at the corner of where you make the right? Well, there is no room. The visibility is because of, I would say, because of all of the cars. Because right now, as it is, when you go up the street, 
when cars are parked over there, you have to go into oncoming traffic as it is. Yeah, that's the nature of the street. And um, I know that there have been people that are in this room that have had issues with delivery trucks and having very close calls with situations that are existing as it is. So the fact that I witnessed even the two school buses with one car parked outside of Rose's house not being able to make the turn as it is, it's just, I just would like for you please to consider what the request is here and the danger that this is gonna put, not even just the people that are in their cars, but the children that are walking, the, the, the strollers, the bicyclists, the pedestrians. I just think it's a recipe for disaster and I really hope that um, it can be avoided at some, some way. Because the, and the, the additional signage too, it just, it just doesn't fit with the neighborhood. I mean, and I understand some, but what's being proposed is excessive. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any, uh, any more comments? I saw a few hands. No, we're good. Okay. Is there any way to, at some point, just, I mean, there's lots of comments about the traffic patterns and everything, but, and we have some suggestions here, mm -hmm. but is there any way to study the traffic a little bit more and make more recommendations to sort of address the issues such that were brought up now? Safety, pedestrian safety, these conditions that are just unnatural and or is that well, just I mean, I think it's just part of the problem. I mean, you, unfortunately, you all live on a street that's just generally not safe. I don't think you should say that. But. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's yeah, a it's narrow a, street. I mean, you know. Condition. Right, it is existing, although I sympathize. I mean, there's it's a lot of, that. everyone just keeps pointing at that. And, you know. We're trying to make the best of what right, we is thought there. Right, we put on paper everything that we could come up with. Right, we can't change the conditions that are so, there. Right, so it's like <clears throat> we tried our best to, yeah, to work with look at have. every possible angle. If people don't like the angle that we came up with, well, we don't have to do that, but yeah, I mean, there's only so many solutions. Right, we've addressed as much as we could. I guess, you know, look, it, it's it's a less than ideal traffic situation now um, and it becomes a little more complicated when you're adding this this uh, cul-de-sac you know where it's at um, and you know uh, personally you know I, I depend a lot on Phil Greeley's input because you're the neutral in this and the, you're the consultant that is here to advise this board on, on the town's behalf. Um, I understand, and I, I think we, we, we had a, a back and forth a couple of meetings ago where, where I kept asking, you know, is there anything that can be done um, with this situation, with this development that um, could possibly uh, make the traffic situation, even, even if it's only a tiny bit, better than it is right now. And I, I, I know we, we kind of struggled with it. I reread the transcript. Uh, I, I think the conclusion was, no, nothing, there's nothing that can be done to make it better. Um, at, at best, you can, you can add some, uh, some measures. You can take some measures that, that might make it less worse. <laughs> uh, but anytime you add a new street, you know, as we'd be doing here, and you're adding additional traffic, even if it's only a, an incremental amount of traffic, uh, I think that combination on what's already a difficult street is not gonna help. Uh, and, and so I, I guess, you know, my question to you is, you know, <laughs> how, how much worse is this if, 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 you know, if we take the appropriate measures? I mean, is it just a, teensy tiny bit worse 
or is it significantly worse? Because significantly worse isn't going to cut it. Oh, first, first of all, I think the applicant is proposing measures to try to offset, and I think speed control and organizing parking offset traffic increases in terms of it's addressing the existing conditions, mm -hmm. uh, the concerns about the site distances exiting. They have to provide minimum site distances. Um, the uh, the issue turning from beach onto Siwanoi, two buses at the same time, um, under their plan, there are some spaces that are being eliminated. I, yeah, I, I, I noticed I that. You, I think that, you understand mm -hmm. that, right? Because, because you're putting a new home being, right there. Correct. And you can't park in front of the and, home. And that so. was the requirement mm -hmm. of the fire department for the proper swing. So that should actually improve that scenario that was talked that, about. That, that particular scenario. Yes, correct. I agree. Um, I think anything that helps reduce speeds, even if it's only one or two miles per hour, um, you know, we're talking about speeds in the 20s, but if you're walking, 20 miles an hour seems fast, okay? It's, it's, it's relative, so if we can, by doing the speed sign signing, bring that down even by one or two miles per hour, that's a betterment. I think the stop sign controls and the sight distances, uh, improving the sight lines, you know, those are things that you know, could be done even without this project, but I think the applicant identified them. And if they're willing to make those, then there's no additional, you know, quote, cost to the town. Um, so, and, and from a traffic generation standpoint, I think they've addressed that. They were conservative on their numbers. Um, so in terms of offsetting any increase in traffic, I think this, you know, helps the situation somewhat. It doesn't solve the situation. Uh, you know, pedestrians, the way to solve situations like this is put sidewalks in, but that's not going to happen here. Um, the parking on one side of the street as presented, the other section of beach already has that limitation. There's other ta uh, roads in the town, there's other streets that have that same situation. Uh, backing out of driveways, that occurs even without these changes, okay? I think by organizing it, it does make it a little better because you're not dealing with cars on e either side of the street, so you have some better visibility. You have a little bit more room to move on your side of the street. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, how much worse is it going to be? I think the recommendations will offset the increases we're talking yep. about. And it, it's to address existing conditions. So. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, for, for example, the, you know, putting all of the parking on one side, I never like driving on a tight road where you have to kind of slalom right. uh, because, and, and, and talk about increasing the likelihood of, uh, of a pedestrian incident when you have cars that are weaving in and out simply because they're trying to avoid other cars. Uh, you know, you have somebody stepping out from behind a car that's a, a less than ideal situation. Right. I, I think we can all agree. So, um, yeah, I do understand that there are, there are, that, that, you know, these are, are well conceived measures to try to alleviate the, um, uh, the impact of, of uh, it, and, and as I view it, the, you know, you have a less than ideal situation, you, and the two things that you're adding, you're adding another street, uh, and, and needless to say, that street requires, uh, that would require a variance, uh, which this board isn't going to address. Right. Uh, and, and the other thing you have is just naturally by having, you know, uh, with an additional six homes in that area, you are increasing traffic. Um, so, though, you know that that comes with the territory. If you if you grant the application, you're going to have that um, that 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 new street coming out, and you're going to have some small increase in in, right. in the traffic flow, and the efforts that have been made to try to offset the impact of that um, seem to be well conceived by by your judgment. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. 
Hey, Mr. Greeley, I have one question. Um, there are several streets in town which are narrow, like Beach Street, have parking on one, stri uh, one side, like, 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 like we're proposing here, but there are one ways. So this is a two-way street. If these two cars are com or two, two cars are coming head on, is there enough room, in your opinion, that they can get by each other? Or it, it's it's going to be this a similar situation to what exists today. They're they're currently functioning as two-way roadways, and if you look at the, the other portion of Beach Street, which is you know between Rose and Highland, that's the way it functions. You know, it's courtesy of the road to a certain extent, and all that this would do would extend that pattern to the section between Rose and Siwanoi. Yeah, I feel like when they're on two sides of the street, though, you have more little places to duck in and wait. Now, all the cars on one side, what happens if they're all packed? Someone's going to have to back up now. It's similar to what occurs on the other section, I, you know. And, and in, in some respects, that, you know, can also calm the traffic down further, but you know, at the end of the day, and the, and the volumes uh, that were documented, and the future volumes, they're of the, still of the same magnitude of what we refer to as a local street. Okay, we're not. If we were talking about, you know, double the volumes, you know, that may be a, a little different to look at whether or not one-way patterns would be appropriate. Well, just to follow up on that, it's a 22-foot wide street or a 20? It, it varies uh, between 20 to 22 feet. There are you know, some sections that are tight. Uh, as you get to rows around the curve, the road opens up a little bit just because of the... Oh, but it, worst case is 20. So is that what's a car with, 8 or 6? Yeah, so with parking, you would take the on-street parking space, you would typically have seven to up to eight feet is what you would allow for that, okay? So you're remaining about 14 feet, 15 feet. For two cars. If someone cars. isn't parked, you know, properly there. But as we said, it's a condition that exists, so we're not really changing anything. Yeah. Okay. So my next question, maybe it's more for you. Procedurally, the recommendations that have been brought up, that Mr. Dempsey brought up, and the stop signs and everything, who implements them, or am I not here? Sorry. Who implements them? Who's responsible? Because some of them require approval by the town board. How, if we were to pursue them, who goes to the town board, and what's the next step to have them implemented? Well, I mean, as part of your decision, you can, um, you know, make a recommendation to the town board to um, make these changes with the stop signs and with the parking regulations. But then they would have to act on their own. I mean, right. So that's the next step. But the applicant would go to the town board, or we would just well, the applicant would petition the town board for those changes. And we would send our recommendations to the town board. To Correct. Right. Right. But, but that would come at the end if the subdivision were to be approved. I mean, they still have to get the variances, and they still have to come back before your board. Okay. But they won't die on the vine. Sooner or later, they'll become part of the application and, and make their way through. Right. Got it. Okay. And typically they would be implemented at the cost to the applicant to do them. If sure. you know, the town board makes that determination. They may make a determination these should be done regardless. Uh, but you, you could work that into your resolution. Right. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Any more comments, guys? Question. Oh, please. Richard Solanko, 200 Beach. Uh, in the, uh, Mr. The, in Collier's, uh, Dr. Dr. Greeley's uh, comments, several times he says, it won't make it worse than it is now. And actually, I think that's not the case. Because, for example, if we take the few cars that are on the other side of the road that are typically the very wider part of the road at the intersection area of rows, 
and we push them down onto beach. Now we're guaranteeing they're going to be behind my car and they're going to be the sight line distance issue as people are trying to take a right out of the new uh, uh, cul-de-sac. They don't do that now because they don't need to. We're not so short on space. That's number one. Number two is the focus about not uh, to Phil's, the lawyer, point about uh, making you know, things worse as, it, as, as far as traffic was addressed. And, and yes, there's not a lot of cars. There's going to be a lot of bicycles, a lot of people on scooters, things like that, which is really, in this area, the, the, the bigger concern from my point of view. But more importantly is that we're adding a, I mean, I don't have a, a graphic in front of you, but you have the corner, you have the current 205 basically looking right down the street of Silenor. You would add a new driver a new cul-de-sac, all within three car lengths of what we're all talking about is one crazy intersection. And no parking restriction changes on the area where we show all those dangerous videos. So the real danger and change that's happening, we're adding significant danger, I'm trying to emphasize, is the new source of traffic and people in the most compressed area. And we already know that from the data we received yesterday, or the day before yesterday, is they're accelerating very fast there. They're going to be at 21 miles an hour at that point of where that cul-de-sac is. They're already at speed. Your, your stop signs, I mean, your, your speed signs aren't going to do anything for that. That's just the behavior of people. And those are where the people are going to be either going left to the city or Bronxville, or they're coming right. And they got a parked car for sure. They're blocking my ability to get on my driveway, which I don't have now, so it's making it worse. And people's ability to see down the street, which they don't have now. So it's making a, a bad situation a lot worse, a lot worse. And I think Christina wants to point out is that there might have been a misunderstanding about the situation she's talking about the school buses. It's not going to be mitigated by not having potentially a car on the uh, south side of the street, that wasn't an issue with what the, the situation she was describing. That was maybe misunderstood. So I, I would emphatically disagree with that the situations are, are now not being made worse by what's going on. The, the movement of the cars and the added uh, source of complexity in, a, in a, an area where these kids, sometimes young, sometimes stupid, sometimes, you know, youth, not paying attention. I realize they could get hurt. They're not paying attention. All these different things. Now it's just like a video game. Everything's coming at you at once in that very tight area. This is crazy. Thank you. Yes. All right. I'm sorry. I got to ask you one more question, Mr. Greeley. Do you mind going back up? Does, and I think I know what your opinion is, but I gotta ask it, does making the parking on the North Hardy Street make the situation any better by organizing it or as suggested, it might actually exacerbate it, make it worse? Uh, two points. Number one, it definitely makes it better for emergency vehicle access, number one, by consolidating it. Uh, the positioning of it relative to driveways, I think the plan that Mr. Dempsey showed accommodates that in terms of the sight line exiting from the cul-de-sac, uh, that one vehicle that they're talking about, with it all consolidated on one side, the vehicles traveling uh, towards Sirenoy will be further away from that edge. And they will have to, if someone's parked there, move forward to see before they exit. The speeds we're talking about, we have uh, accommodated the sight lines based on his plan. So I think the, if, if we were talking about higher speeds in the 30s, then we would have to recommend removing that space. With the speeds we're talking about, um, that area, and, ag and again, the, the speeds refer to both directions. So the vehicles, uh, you know, go coming away from Siwanoi at that point would be a little bit less. Yep. Okay. 
I, I do have a question uh, because <laughs> I, I'll play devil's advocate here. Yeah. Um, just as I think it's an advantage to remove that slalom-like parking on both sides, if you do so and have parking only on one side, would that have a tendency to increase the speeds because you no longer have to slow down right. naturally? Yeah. The, the width of the road will still limit that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that would be my experience if, as well. If, you yeah. have a, if we were talking about a 35-foot wide road and you put parking only on one side, then yes, it would probably change that. But with the width of the road is the determining factor here. So I'm going to take comfort in the fact that you just said everything has been looked at, all of the sight lines and emergency vehicles and the circulation and the safety and all that has been looked at by the, by the applicant. You've looked at it, you reviewed it, and you said everything that's been brought up by the public and their concerns have been addressed in their application. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So then it comes down to what do we do next? So we've spent a long time on this and we certainly done it, we on the board have done our due diligence and listened to comments from the public. We've listened to our consultants, we've re-listened to comments from the public and our consultants and we've gone back and forth. We understand what the issues are um, and um, it's a difficult, it's a difficult neighborhood, it really is. It's in, from the very beginning I think we've all said it's existing conditions were just poor to start with. And I think maybe the very first meeting that we came to, we all asked Mr. Greeley and everyone else, is what's being done here make it any worse? And I think you brought up again tonight, Phil, you said to Mr. Greeley, is there anything you could do to sort of make it a little bit better um, than what is there now to offset any increases due to the development? I think, I don't know if it, maybe you said a little bit better, but I remember you asked that and, and we sort of agree with Mr. Greeley that, yeah, and I think you might have said it just now, it helps make things a a little bit less worse, a little bit less worse, right. Um, so I mean, I think we've done everything we can based on the conditions. All of the other issues that are brought up about water, um, similarly, I would think that I'd ask Mr. Tremelli about the same questions, that is this the best we could do here? And I understand there's lots of water there, um, but we have to leave it up to our, to their consultant, our, and our consultant in the town that what's being done will work. I know the pictures stink and everything, but I can't, I can't, um, I can't make conclusions that it won't, that what is being presented isn't going to work. It's being presented as something that's going to work. Our consultant reviews it. They give the thumbs up and we act on that. We all have our own opinions. We all have lots of opinions in this room. Um, and I have mine and I wish there was a way I could change everything, but we're, as I've said repeatedly, we're faced with the documents that are put in front of us. And right now, the documents that have been put in front of us that are on the record and all the comments that have been made point to the direction that the impact on the, on the neighborhood is, is not such that we should say it, um, it can't move forward. If I, if I can add, uh, f first of all, I think uh, the chairman <laughs> stated something that su suggested that the neighborhood was sort of less than ideal. Well, um, I, I think he only meant that the, for example, the traffic and it, it is a less than ideal traffic situation. Um, certainly, if, if if the measure of the neighborhood is the uh, the fervor with which its residents uh, come forward and 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 bring up all these terrific points for for this board to consider, well, uh, obviously this is a great neighborhood. Um, I, I I do know that for for example what. Uh, uh, what Mr. Tremelli stated, and I, I listened very carefully at, our, at the April meeting, um, I, I know we had the, the t terrible uh, water event uh, just about a week or so after that meeting. Not, maybe it was the weekend of that meeting, and, and, and certainly uh, made for some dramatic footage. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it wasn't even a 100-year event. Um, there, there is, you know... <laughs> Global warming being what it is, we're probably all faced with these types of events, no matter what we do at this point. Um, but, but Mr. Tremelli was, was pretty um, adamant, and, and I remember we, we, we definitely questioned him, that the uh, water um, management on this site is going to result you know, in a, a net improvement 
uh, of, of the water conditions at, at this location from how they presently exist. Um, I, I, I understand your skepticism. I, 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 those photos today from D'Ambrosio are, are real. Um, you know, I, 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 that was a, a, a pretty bad storm. Everything came sort of at once, but I think it was only about five and a half inches we got over 36 or 48 hours. Um, but as the chairman said, um, you know, we, we, we do place, I, I know personally I place a lot of weight on what our consultants say uh, because, uh, you know, and, and, and I, I certainly don't mean that to negate your experiences as, as residents of, of the area and you, you know the area better than anyone else. But we also, um, I, I certainly defer to experts. I do it in, in my own job every day. Um, and, and, you know, when we have, you know, true neutrals here, as, as we do with, uh, with Dr. Greeley and, and Mr. Cermelli, who are here exclusively to help educate us and sift through the information that's being presented by the applicant and, and tell us what's, what, 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 what uh, carries water and what doesn't. Um, you know, I, I have to rely on, on that information. Um, it, it, it's, it's less than ideal. There are, there's, there's not a good, easy decision here, but, um, you know, I, I think we certainly have investigated um, the circumstances here, um, you know, pretty thoroughly. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Nemesak. Were you done? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Any other comments? I, I leave it at that. It's you said that much better, than, <laughs> much better than I could. I have no comments. No comments? No comments. Great. Yeah. So then, um, what are we doing here? Presentation. So the public hearing is going to stay open until the applicant returns. But at this point, I'm going to make a motion to adopt the negative declaration pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act for the reasons stated in parts 1, 2, and 3 of the EAF for this application, 23-02203 Beach Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that being said, this is going to the zoning, and they're going to assess the variances that have been requested by the applicant. Um, and after that, it comes back here, correct? So it's going to be back here. We'll see how it goes with the variances. Um, and then we'll take it up if, if and when you guys are back here. Yeah. So, and I certainly encourage the, uh, uh, the, the, the interested parties to, uh, to be present at the meetings of the uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right, so their purview at this point is to review the variances that are being requested and act, act on their best um, and act on those. So I'm making a motion to forward this application, 2302, 203 Beach Street subdivision to the Zoning Board of Appeals for consideration of necessary variances for this application. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. The next application is 2318 Bout Boxing, LLC. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Yeah. Take Have care. a nice summer. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. Yep. Relax a, a little months. bit. Yeah. All yours. Yep. Good evening. Is it uh, okay to begin? Yes. yes. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Could use the mic. Yep. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, James Gibbons with Gibbons Engineering, and I'll be uh, presenting the information on uh, about boxing at uh, 
76 Garth Road for the uh, special use permit. Um, last time the board had uh, <clears throat> heard about this application, we, uh, we hadn't discussed the special use uh, issues, so I want to go over those tonight and uh, continue with the application. Um, is that okay to do that or? Okay. Yep. So, um, in terms of the, the items in the, uh, the law, we, uh, we wanted to go over the, the main items that the board would uh, definitely have to look at. Um, the space is existing. Um, there is no exterior construction expected. Um, it's part of the uh, existing space. So nothing is going to occur outside. <clears throat> so we feel that uh, because of that, um, we're not really going to uh, do much with landscaping, exterior improvements, and uh, so on and so forth. So the internal space is about 1,200 square feet. Uh, it's going to function more like a private uh, educational type of class as opposed to a uh, traditional gym. Um, so there's not going to be a ring, uh, any kind of competition or, or uh, intense type of, uh, of exercise. <clears throat> there won't be a pool. There won't be any kind of uh, retail uh, uh, sales of, of food or beverages. So it's going to be a, a very simple uh, location to teach and to uh, help people uh, improve their skills and, and have some fun at the same time. It's a small space. It's only 1,200 square feet. Um, I was talking to Alec before the meeting, who was going to be the, the uh, principal um, of this space. And, he feels about eight people will probably be present most of the time, and maybe later on the, the 16 uh, people that I discuss in my uh, report. Uh, but it, it's intimate, it's private, there, there's a, uh, it's a quiet type of establishment. In fact, in, in Roslyn, where Alec has his other space, um, there's a spa uh, nec next to his space, and there's never been a complaint or any kind of issues with noise or or the uh, intensity of the, the workout going on inside. Um, <clears throat> so we, we feel it's small, it's cozy, no exterior changes. Um, so we don't feel that will negatively infect, affect the neighborhood. Um, the big issue is parking. I did look at the issue of trying to park cars um, behind this, this establishment in the condominium uh, unit behind. Uh, from what I understand at the last meeting, there was a discussion about changing the parallel parking to maybe diagonal. Well, there's just no way with the backup lane possibility and, and the uh, ability to put any kind of parking from a parallel to a, uh, a diagonal type of, of uh, activity. Um, the other possibility was to see if the landlord was available to provide parking uh, within the condominium complex, and we just don't have, have that as a possibility right now. Um, Alec has prepared some photographs, if I could give it to the board, um, showing you various times of, uh, of parking that's available. And yeah, go ahead, Alec. And uh, the, the possibilities of, uh, okay. of parking, you can see in the pictures, there's plenty of spots on the street. There's 10. Given the, uh, Hold on, sir. Could you just hand over? Yeah. Yeah, just a few. He's got 10 sets, so. Oh, he does? So I said put one set on the easel. Oh, and pass them out? Good idea. <laughs> we literally get the picture, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Right, back to you. 
So we, we kind of try to show the, act, the uh, availability of parking on the street, and uh, it's our belief that because of the small size of the class, um, the various times that, that it might be possible to use on-street parking, given that we can't provide parking uh, off-street behind the location, uh, or to, to modify the parking lot that exists. Um, there seems to be plenty of space over at the uh, Freightway garage and the adjacent lot next to it um, <coughs> if it's needed, but we don't even think that that parking uh, would be needed except for maybe a, a very rare occasion, but it's our belief that we, we don't envision any parking needed given the uh, small size of the class. But in, in terms of providing the board actual off-street parking spaces, we, we don't have that to, uh, to provide. Um, so that, that's one of the, the major uh, concerns that we wanted to be uh, straightforward about. Um, the other issue, um, aside from maybe variances, would be that because the building is an existing building and there's a requirement of 100 feet uh, setback from the uh, property line uh, to a, a, the, uh, the gym for a special use permit, the, the building is existing. There's no way to provide that 100 foot setback. So um, we indicate it's pre-existing. We're not doing any exterior construction, but we're right on the property line in front of the, uh, the building at the sidewalk. Um, we're not gonna change any exterior lighting. Um, we're not gonna create any kind of public address system or any of the other things that might go with uh, what you'd see in a gym. It's, it's just gonna be quiet and cozy. Um, nothing mechanical outside, no live type of activity, everything inside the, the space. Um, Alec would like to run the, the, uh, the business where he does open before 9 a.m. and that's, that's uh, not allowed according to the requirements of the special use permit. So um, we are looking to do the, the teaching and the activity of, of uh, this business um, before nine, but it would be a very private one-on-one -on -one kind of class uh, uh, with an individual or two. Um, so that, that's another item I, I highlight out to the board. Um, again, no landscaping, no exterior work. Um, we don't really expect um, an issue where children need to be picked up uh, with the gym. Uh, if there's any young <coughs> youngsters or, or uh, teenagers, they're gonna be with their, their parents and it's it's not like a, a congregation. It's a very small and uh, cozy type of environment. Um, there's no road work plans. It's a pre-existing building. Um, and then, of, of course, the, uh, the issue of there's just not enough parking off street in item J. And there's no pool that will be uh, on this space, it's just uh, not part of the, the concept for the client. So with that, I wanted to open up to the board any questions you may have and, uh, and discuss this if, if you so wish. Sure, just stand by. So these points, the ones you gave us, he's at, do we believe he's adequately addressed these requirements? I think he, yeah. is this what you use, this checklist for the most part to prepare your responses? I think you, Maybe you didn't address them verbatim, but you did cover on everything that we use for the special permits. Yeah, if, if you want, we could go over verbatim. Um, no, I, I think you. Yeah, yeah, you I, th I think I think we've we've got them here. Yeah, uh, I think. Idea. Yeah, but th th this will require more more than a a handful of variances, which w would would be required uh, to be obtained from the ZBA. Right. 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 There's yeah. three variances that yeah. we've identified that they would have to mm -hmm. obtain. One is for. Um, the parking being on the lot line as opposed yep. to 100 feet set back yep. one is another is for opening prior to 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then the last is the the parking variance yep. so well, you can recommend to the yeah when you send it to them you can recommend to the zoning board your yep. opinions that they yeah, can the, weigh I, 
I think you should try to move the lot line. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Just <right>. kidding. <laughs> um, no, that, that, so, <laughs> it's, it's been a while, and a lot has happened since you guys were last here. It was just a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> but this last application And actually, like, it, was, it was only it was four like weeks seven, ago. <laughs> seven months in dog years or something. <laughs> so, but I guess if I remember correctly, um, maybe Alec explained to us, it's the hours are not the same hours that coincide with when most of the parking is taken, which is the, the dinner hour, and the amount of traffic is much less than you would expect from a typical health uh, health club yeah, that's what we're seeing with the the pictures do demonstrate the uh, the times that Alex would want to do yeah. the teaching yeah they're great pictures and I like to believe them but uh, I, mean, I mean that's kind of what he said when they came in here last time so but the one concern I have is I, I, I know that Alex said last time and it, it, he presented very effectively last time on the concept and the enthusiasm is all there and uh, but but I do know uh, in keeping with people's typical schedules that um, the, the classes, the, the, the non-one-on-one -on -one sessions are more likely, and they're not big classes, but they're more likely to be first thing, maybe, maybe some nine o'clock, but eight, maybe eight, nine o'clock, and in the evenings. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know that, um, look, I think the, the one most significant concern I have is, is on parking, and I know that there were a few ideas that were floated and some of them don't seem to be really uh, viable ones. Um, there was a suggestion uh, made by a gentleman here a mere four weeks ago, um, and, and it was, and, and again, I don't know how this would, whether this is viable or not, and whether, you know, it, and I believe it involved uh, the, um, uh, the village of Scarsdale as well, and but but there's apparently a lot there that 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 has potential spaces that if if somehow uh, and and there was some suggestion that those could potentially be metered and it sounds like to me quite frankly, well beyond your ability to simply wave a magic wand and have it done, but if, if there's you know I, I I would certainly encourage the applicant to explore every avenue. Um, and, and it, it, you know, because I, I think that's what the zoning board is definitely going to want to hear is, you know, what, what, what have you looked at? What have you tried to do to, um, to address this, the, the parking issue? Because the lot line's not really an issue, and they'll determine, you know, whether they want to let you open before 9 o'clock or not. Uh, but, um, but the parking is something that, you know, any, anyone who's, who's been in that Garth Road area um, you know, it, it is perpetually a problem, and it's a problem in many parts of our town. Um, but, but this one happens to abut on Scarsdale as well, and uh, there was a suggestion last time that there could be some form of, um, uh, there, there, there seems to be the potential for availability. I remember there was a discussion of, you know, metering spaces that are right now being underutilized in a, a parking lot because people are not going to work in the city as, as frequently as they used to pre-pandemic. And that, um, you know, again, I don't know what discussions can be had, who, who you can go to other than um, go to Lucas in, in the first instance, and, and he may be able to help coordinate uh, discussions with or, or point in the right direction. But I think that would go a long ways towards, you know, if you, if you were able to, to point out that we've secured, um, you know, the, the possibility of some additional spaces here, that would really show some good faith and some initiative, I think, that would probably, I would hope, um, result in your application uh, being viewed more favorably by the ZBA. Okay? Thank you. Any more comments, guys? This is an open public hearing. Any comments from the public about this application? Well, or from the applicant. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, first, yeah. <laughs> uh, you want it? Yeah. Add on. Hi, I'm Alec. Um, so what you were suggesting about the, um, the parking spaces, so there's a big parking lot um, that has um, a lot of reserved parking. Um, it's, it's a Scarsdale lot. So I did talk to them. So if I had to pre-reserve it, it would be too expensive. It would be over $10,000 a month in spots that we don't plan on ever using. But what um, they did say was, if ever needed, 
you know, they do have more than 28 um, open spots. So um, if ever needed, I could just send cars there and then what I was thinking is, and they, they have hundreds of spots that they say that are open for daily use, um, would be if we were to send them there and then whether I pay or they pay or whatever, they're open spots. So um, if, if they're, and I don't know how that would work, but because um, if I had to get it on contract, it, it wouldn't work yeah. anyway, but um, I, I didn't know if it was that you need access to 28 spots or that you officially need to have 28 spots because access they said they have 100 um in one of the parking lots they you know they said they're open spots you know it's okay. forever so um so i did talk to them and they said they do have that ability if needed and there's also yeah. needed parking all over the place that would fall under it so i did there, is there metered them. parking in that parking facility or just around the neighborhood around and there's another lot where what you guys were referencing to that like um that lot that it's not used and it's metered before um, 6 p.m. or something. Yes. Anyone can technically use that, but this yep. is different, so. Okay. Yeah, so, well, it seems like you've taken the initiative and I do appreciate that. Um, I, and I also understand that, you know, you're, you're not gonna reserve spots. You're probably working on too tight a margin to begin with, uh -huh. uh, you know, that that would just blow your, your finances out of the water. Um, but. Uh, you know, certainly I would, uh, you know, I don't know if there's a, 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 I don't know even who you'd speak to in Scarsdale or, or within that, whether that's a municipal lot or not, but if, if they could turn some of those spaces rather than being kind of reserved for whomever in, into metered spaces as well, that would increase the capacity in the neighborhood, which is something that you could point to, to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, but certainly, you know, the availability, if, if that's something you can verify to the Zoning Board of, of Appeals, is probably helpful. Uh, you know, again, I, I can't speak for, for that board, um, but, uh, you know, I would, I would definitely um, try to firm up whatever that, that commitment is or, 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 or whether there are any other options available that would be usable, that would be you know, user-friendly, I should say. Um, because you know, nobody wants to pay for a, a, a parking meter and, and have to look at the, uh, the, their, their watch and find out, you know, am I, am I about, you know, did I put enough money in the meter? Maybe that's not a, a big issue with, with um, you know, paying with an app. But uh, people will always go for, I can speak for myself, they always love to get free parking. I always personally see it as vindication from the Almighty when I get a very good parking space. Uh, it means I'm living my life very well and I'm being rewarded for it. Um, but a free spot, yeah. Do you like that, <laughs> Paul Sorgi? <laughs> um, people will always go for a free spot, you know, and, and people will take up all the free spots first before they put a nickel in the meter or a quarter, whatever it is. So the more you can, um, uh, the, 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 but the more ultimately, the more availability you can point to, you know. And, and these photos are great. I mean, they show that during parts of the day there's plenty of availability, but there are other parts of the day that we all know that it becomes a lot tighter. And so that's that's what the zoning board of appeals is going to be looking for. Okay. So, I think you've warmed up with this board. You've presented it pretty well. You've got us convinced of your intentions and what you're doing. And as Mr. Nemesek said, what you could offer them. And so when you go to present the zoning board. Do this again, add what he said, present your case, and they're reasonable guys, they'll understand it. So I mean, we're gonna send you to, at least I'm gonna make a motion to send, but I think you've done a good job here presenting what you have, just do it again, and you'll, you know, see what they say. That's my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So let's get this moving then, what am I doing? So, public hearing, I... Yep. We, open. we have the, we, yeah. it's open, so. It stays yep. open, yep. anyone else? It stays open, good. Because you're coming back, right? So I make a motion to forward application 2318 Bout Boxing LLC, uh, 74th Garth Road to Zoning Board of Appeals for consideration of the necessary variances for this application. Uh, with the following recommendations, I mean, we recommend that zoning um, look favorably on the variance and um, do what they need to let this applicant, applicant uh, take their space. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. 
Right. Thank you very Great much. Great summer. Thanks, John. Uh, you want your pictures you, back? Yeah, why don't you take uh, these? Yeah. You may oh, probably sure. use these with the zoning Yeah, board. you're going to have to yeah. organize them again because <laughs> we made a big mess. You'll, no, I'll just hey, keep these for the file. Yeah, I'll keep them. I I'll might keep recommend if you're going to give them to zoning, just organize them like on sheets or something. Cause, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is just a little bit. I think they're good pictures, but flipping through them sort of yeah. negates their usefulness. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good, good night, luck. guys. Next application. Oh my. Um, all right. We're finally at the new business. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Next application 2313 Embassy Cleaners 826 Scarsdale. And this isn't really new business. We saw you guys not that long ago. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Rifkin, and I'm the owner of the property, property at 826 Scarsdale Avenue. And I want to thank you for agreeing to consider our change of paint color. Uh, I'm also the owner of Embassy Cleaners. I purchased this property a little over a year ago, and my company, Embassy Cleaners, will occupy this property in its entirety. Uh, I wanted to come here tonight to personally present to you, as I will be part of the East Chester business community, and I expect to be a positive contributor to the East Chester community as a whole. Uh, for point of reference, Embassy Cleaners is the largest dry cleaner in Westchester County. We have been established locally since 1937. We are a high-end dry cleaner, and we have been selected as one of, Amer one of America's best cleaners annually since 2004, uh, one of only 30 dry cleaners that are selected annually out of approximately 40,000 dry cleaners around the country. We've been based in Larchmont for over 85 years, uh, and now we will be relocating a large part of our business uh, and our operations to East Chester, including our offices, our production, uh, route distribution, and we will also be relocating our current Scarsdale retail store uh, from Scarsdale Village to this building. Uh, additionally, we'll be adding a large tailoring and alteration space with a separate entrance with a particular focus on bridal alterations, which we believe is an area that is uh, vastly underserved in the county. Uh, it seems that many people who have wedding gowns uh, that are, va are high value wedding gowns are going into Manhattan uh, for this work. Uh, and we expect to really focus on this and to draw from all over the county. And some of these customers will presumably be spending money at other businesses in East Chester uh, while visiting the area. Regarding the building, we originally presented this application for a color change to the ARB as per the town's procedure. Our original presentation showed the building in a mint green color. And I believe you have a drawing of uh, a rendering of what our new color would be. Um, the original color was not appreciated by most members of the ARB. And a recommendation was made that we instead consider softening this color to a sage green, which is what we did. Uh, and by the way, our brand colors are this mint green uh, and blue. Uh, you may have seen our, our trucks on the road and, and you may have noticed that uh, before. So uh, we wanted the building to sort of represent what our branding was and uh, unfortunately the ARB didn't uh, uh, see eye to eye with that. Very tough at the ARB. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, uh, we had a subsequent meeting uh, with ARB earlier this month and we presented uh, a shade of sage green uh, like they suggested and uh, the ARB uh, had a positive reaction to that and uh, this is the color that they're recommending to this board for approval. Okay, and that's the only 
the, the only uh, <coughs> your application is just about the colors, right? Just about yeah, the because color. everything else is, we we approved. Everything else yeah. has been approved. Yeah. Yes, okay. Every, everything so this, else has been approved. Yes, this, this should be a pretty easy one. <laughs> I, I figured you guys. Des yeah. I, I think you, you guys deserve something easy right uh, now well, after well, uh, the last two hours. Particularly seeing as our hardworking <laughs> ARB uh, approved this color on uh, on the second go round. So yes, uh, I, I, I think that's probably good enough for me. So uh, it's the yeah. it's the Sage Tin Four Fifty Eight. Yes, correct. Yeah, I got nothing. What's that? Yeah. This year. Right, that's existing. Yeah. Well, the color gives a nice definition. Yes, it's it's very muted. Oh, the yeah. pattern. Yeah, I'm ready to approve it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. You ready? Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. This is pretty easy, guys. <laughs> yeah, they wore us down. So, um, what are we doing here? So, this is a public hearing. So, I make a motion to open the public hearing on application 2313, Embassy Cleaners. Second. Two six Scarsdale Avenue. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody? Going once, going twice. I make a motion to close the uh, public hearing on this application. Embassy Cleaners, Scarsdale Avenue. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve this, uh, <coughs> this color scheme in this application. 2313 Embassy Cleaners. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Good luck. Yep. And Mr. Rifkin, I appreciated your, uh, even though you're only changing the colors, you got, you got a kind of free advertising time in there. It was very, very well played. Listen, there's at least a dozen people here who could be potential customers. Oh, we have a massive we have a yeah, big yeah, audience on TV. Oh, massive. Yeah. It was and gonna, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask why I should leave my current dry cleaner and come up to you guys. It's a little bit out of the way, but I'm sure. Sure, this is a good up. reason, right? <laughs> well, we, uh, we look forward to having at least some of you as our clients moving forward. Great, thank right. you. I want to thank, thank you, you very much for your consideration and have your good decision. Night. Thank have you. Have a wonderful summer. Good luck. Thanks. Have a great Thanks. night. Next application is 2322 Westchester Meat Market, one mil. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, my name is John Yanisito. I'm an architect and I'm representing Westchester Meat Market, the tenant at One Mill Road. Uh, we are requesting a special use permit uh, to provide outdoor dining at the front of the existing meat market in Delhi. Uh, the proposed uh, outdoor dining is highlighted in yellow on the site plan. Uh, the, proposed, uh, the proposed outdoor dining uh, we'll, we'll have five tables uh, with 20 seats and will be uh, located completely within the limits of the property lines. Um, we are proposing to place new planters along the side uh, lot line and the front lot line to, to define the dining area and provide a separation to the public sidewalk. Uh, we're also proposing two umbrellas within the seating area. Uh, the hours of operation will be 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., the same as the, uh, the business hours. Uh, no music, no additional lighting, no additional signage is proposed for the dining area. Uh, and all the tables and chairs will be stored indoors uh, after business hours. And the umbrella as well? The umbrellas? Not the umbrellas, just the chairs and, yeah. and the uh, tables will be uh, stored inside. Okay. The umbrellas will stay outside and be yeah. tied, tied back. Okay. Um, then we have this area highlighted in red. That represents an existing uh, planting bed, which encroaches into the existing sidewalk. Uh, we did meet with the uh, with Rocco Latella from the highway department out at the site, uh, and it was determined that the uh, the planting bed had to be removed uh, because with the new the new um, planters on on our side of the property line and in the, the planting bed encroaching on the sidewalk. There was just not enough room for pedestrians to get through. Um, so what we came up with was uh, the highway department was gonna remove the existing tree that's there. Um, and then uh, my client was gonna repair and patch the existing sidewalk. Uh, also, the, the highway department recommended adding two additional planters out at the curb. Um, and then those locations will be uh, reviewed uh, by the highway department uh, before they're installed. So we don't know the exact location of the two additional planters yet, 
but they will happen along the, the, the curb line in front of the building. Okay, and then on the furniture. So the, the post planters uh, will be black and it will be in two sizes, a 12 by 30 and a 15 by 15. The tables will be 30 inches round uh, and will be metal with a black fin finish. The chairs will be metal with a, a vinyl wicker in a navy blue finish, and the umbrellas will have a, a navy blue finish. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So the uh, the tree that's that would be removed, the planting bed. This is a pretty immature tree. Is this? I, I'm, I'm looking at a Google Maps photo right now, and it looks. I'm trying to figure out when this is from, but. It looks like it's it's a relatively recently planted tree. Yeah, it was planted not too long ago. So I think uh, Rocco said he can actually pull it out and plant it somewhere else in town. Okay, is there any thought to um, putting putting a uh, mo well, basically moving the planting bed down a little further into? Uh, but I I know that there's seating next. Uh, there's outdoor seating at the pizza place just down the. Well, there was. Yeah. I, I think they didn't renew their application. So, but they they definitely can if they yeah. wanted to but uh, yeah so the two ends could potentially have outdoor dining um, I guess they could but the, the problem with the, what, what Rocco was saying was the problem with putting another planting bed there is the planting bed has to be too large and and the, the sidewalk is not very large right in that area mm -hmm. um, so it would have to encroach it to the sidewalk and then drive pedestrians back onto the onto the private property to walk around so it would make just more sense not having any okay. trees this is the only, if you look at the whole space between Parsons and, and uh, White Plains yes. Road, it's the only tree on that whole line. Yep. Um, so that's why we came up with the idea of having the planters as a better option. Uh, and if you, if you go down towards um, White Plains Road, there are planters um, on the island and also on yep. the Fisher Avenue. But there are limits to what planters can do. I mean, I know that on, on Mill Road there, um, which I, I pass every day on my walk down to the train station, um, Particularly in the springtime, uh, and, and I know they, when they redid that area, they, they took down a lot of the older trees and then they put up new trees. But they traditionally had uh, pear trees there, and they just look wonderful in the springtime. And and uh, and obviously, it gives the entire um, the the entire area uh, just a better feel. It isn't just all concrete um, when when you have trees, and they yeah, provide and shade. And and you know, it's it's more in keeping with the character of what. You know, that sort of downtown East Chester, for, it's sort of the center of town right there, what, what it, I, I believe it ought to look like. So, um, you know, I, I really have no, you know, I think the, the suggestions for the outdoor dining are all very good. I'm just wondering, is there a way that um, we can, uh, and, and I, I see where this particular um, planting bed is, and, you know, is there a way that that can be moved so that you, you do still have uh, a, a, a planting bed between Parsons and, and Route 22 um, that doesn't interfere with uh, your right away. And it's not a, it's not a, it, it's a pretty recent vintage tree, so it's not like we're, we're cutting down some priceless, you know, 100-year-old tree, uh, which I would have real problems with. Um, the fact that it can be actually dug up and moved is, is comforting. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, I would prefer if there was, you know, if, if there was a tree there somewhere. I just like the, I like that look better than I do a bare area with a, a few planters. Yeah, and I think, I think we looked at that with, with, uh, with Rocco when we were out there. And I think the, mm -hmm. the issue was that the planting bed had to be larger than that, that, yeah. that piece of stamped concrete that's there. Uh, and, and just having a plant, a tree in that little stamped concrete area to allow enough space for the sidewalk, uh, just the tree would not, not do well there. Yeah, I, I know I, on, on, on Fisher Avenue going down towards Tuckahoe, they have some planting beds that have, you know, the, the tiniest of, of, of uh, you know, earth area. And, you know, I just know that the, some of the trees aren't doing that well. You, right. need, a, you need a certain amount of space well, to make so it work. Also, as they get larger, yeah. the root bed's going to get bigger. Yep. And it's going to start popping the curb and the street and can create some issues down the road. Uh, but not a reason not to plant trees, yeah. Mr. Yanisito. <laughs> well, we're going to have small trees in the planters. <laughs> so um, I just, I guess a couple of comments. I just noticed there's a street lamp there, too. 
Yeah, the, so the street lamp is within the, um, uh, within the, the stamped concrete part. So oh, that's so that's not part of the sidewalk? So it's, it's, a, it's a portion, so there's, there's enough room for the sidewalk. So if you look at the, uh, the photos that I, that I submitted, yeah, the planting bed is so much larger than that, uh, that strip of red uh, stamped concrete. And the lamppost happened within that stamped concrete area. Oh, so that's not, that's not walking area anyway? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not walking area. There's a good photo here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, but the 5 9 is from the curb to the property line, right? I'm sorry? Yeah, 5.9, no. Nope. It looks bigger than that, but I mean, this is 9 7, no, that's, that's yeah. It's 5 9. But at the location of the lamp, at the location of the lamp, it's not 5.9, right? No. There's, it's less. Probably 48 inches. The, the location of the lamp is not. It, right, it says 5.9 is the clear sidewalk dimension from curb to property line. That's not walking space. That's just a dimension. How much do you think is uh, actually available for walking space there, in particular at the lamp? I mean, it's like. Uh, 5.9. I'm sorry, not 5.9. Five, five, six feet. 5.9. Scale. Mm -hmm. If scale. On the on the uh, on the layout. Oh, yeah, 5.9. That's so. That's from the property line to the outside of the curb, right? So I'm asking, how much space do you think is available as a walking surface, particularly at the lamp posts? This, this, this is probably three feet. About three feet or 42. 42 inches. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when in doubt, use a scale. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think it's very little. I, I, but I don't know what you can do about it. I just, it's your property. It's the yeah. tenant's property, so we can't tell them what to do on their property, I guess, can we? Or? Well, I mean, we did, I did circulate the, um, the application to the chief of police, the fire chief, the superintendent of highways, um, and the county department of public works. Um, the uh, chief of police did, um, he didn't see any issues with emergency response, but he did note the narrowness of the sidewalk. Um, he, I'll just read you what he wrote. I do have a concern that if they make the sidewalk that narrow and they remove the tree, it may force pedestrians to walk into the roadway. This is a busy roadway and that area of town is frequented by the many young people who tend to travel in groups or on bikes, skateboards or scooters. If traveling in large groups are riding and there are people coming the other way, they may need to walk into the street. Even if the tree is removed, there is a lamp post and sign post in the way which may make them walk into the street. So that was the concern he expressed. And it's a bus stop, right? And the bus probably stops right around there? Yeah, the bus stops there also. Yeah, it's like Rusty for the Forgot to ask the Beeline folks. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's just, it's a lot of congestion right there. I mean, the, the, the County Department of Public Works and Transportation did kind of also come to this similar conclusion. In general, they tend to frown on outdoor dining on any county road, which is kind of a broad, you know, right. um, mandate. But um, they just said, um, but they, they don't control the sidewalk. So they just expressed an opinion that, you know, they thought that the intersection was a busy intersection and very tight. That was what they said. Was, Lucas, was the police department's comment largely based on um, if you didn't remove the tree? Or, I mean, it, it said it's still tight with the lamppost if you do remove the tree, but the first part of what you read, I believe, was sidewalk. if you did not remove the tree? Right, right. So he, yep. he was saying even if you, even if the tree is removed, oh, even the lamp, if. okay, the lamp post and sign post are in the way. Correct. But but the first part of what you read was if you didn't remove the tree. Is that, that correct? I that. Um, yeah. I mean, he, 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 the the case he makes is that it, there's a potential for pedestrians to go into the roadway yeah. regardless whether you if you certainly if you keep the tree. Yeah. But even if you remove the tree, um, his concern is that people will walk in the road. Yeah, I mean, 42 inches is the width of the table here. It's just very small. So who controls the sidewalk in a situation like this? It's their private property, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a layer of yeah. responsibilities. The closest yeah. to the building is the, mm -hmm. is the owner, then comes the town, and then once you hit the curb, then it becomes the county. Mm -hmm. 
So how do we encourage you to give us a little more room for our sidewalk? Is, is there any way that the, uh, what, what, is, what is the seating configuration going to be and is there any give I mean, in terms could, of, push yeah. The, uh, we could push the, uh, the, the plant is a little closer to the building. Um, yeah. To shrink that a little bit, that's not, a, I don't think that would be a problem. We still have enough room to get the five tables in there. Uh, the only thing is that we're forcing the public to walk on, on private property. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, they do now, right? They do now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the same situation with the gas station on yeah. the corner. Yeah. The, 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 the sidewalk's very narrow, very and everyone narrow. cuts right through the, the mm -hmm. gas station all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, our yeah, concern I, is quite frankly less with that and more with people getting run over by buses. Uh, yeah, um, right. That we don't want to have happen. Right. All right. Yeah, absolutely. And look, if we have to, we have to bring it back a foot or 18 inches or even two feet. I think we can, we, we can, we can manage feet. that. We'll take it. Right. Yeah. Two feet will get us. Uh, but you, we'll say 40 I, mean, I, would, I would think you need to maintain clearances for the tables as well. Yeah. Right. So you need. So we have nine, nine and a half They're feet. Big um, tables. Nine and a half. And the and the planters are uh, planters? eighteen inches. Got scale. Planters are twelve by twelve by thirty and fifteen. So yeah, okay, mean, so you got enough room there for you got almost like nine. 30, 30, 30 inch tables, so they're not very large tables. Mm -hmm. so you can kind of push up against and you got it. Yeah, nine that's, uh, that's uh, I, th I think if you did that um, and and you just get got that extra. Six. You know, at 18 okay. inches or so, that's you a big difference. Yep. Yeah, 18 inches. Yeah, so feet, now you're whatever. looking at it, instead of a 42 inch um, a sidewalk, you're looking at a, a 60 inch, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think. That's five feet. Yeah. yeah. It's better than what's there. Sure. We'll take it. Yeah. I mean, we'd like a little more, but. So, so just so I understand, you're, you're saying that you want the tables to have like fewer seats around them. Oh no, we just the... want. I don't really care what happens inside oh, their property yeah. line. I just want more space on the, cur on the. Okay. So would the, would the types of tables you purchase need to change or? No, I think the 30-inch tables would still fit, because um, then instead of instead of nine foot uh, nine foot five or nine and a half feet, we're going to end up with uh, what nine eight feet. Um, Eight feet should work with the, with the planters and with the uh, tables. So. Oh, oh, I see. So you would you would move the planters move closer. Move the planters closer to the building. Right. Okay. Would that leave adequate space for? Because um, the fire chief had a comment um, that um, the applicant should show the width of the aisle on either side of the table so that we can determine if it complies with the fire code. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if that would comply with the. But what is what is that dimension? Is it 36? You can tell me. <laughs> well, I would be if, if it's ADA, it would be 36 at least. 30, but, 30, yeah, 36. But I don't know if that's the same requirement for a fire. But wh why would the fire department have to go through those tables? It's outside. Yeah. Um, it's just what he said. Yeah. Tables yeah. are metal, right? Yes. Yeah, they are metal tables. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what dimension he's looking for, and if we'll meet that requirement. Yeah. That, that, uh, well, I mean, that, that can also be worked out. You know, later, yeah. you know, um, you know, with our building inspector and stuff like that. Yeah. I'd like mean? to yeah. see six feet for the sidewalk. Yeah, I wouldn't be so concerned about buses running people over. I think, yeah, Sorry, I, I mentioned that. that kind of speechless, <laughs> right? There's no room for tables then. <laughs> Whether it's 42 inches or 60 inches, if a bus hits it's the cup and jumps over the curb, it, it's not going to make a difference. You're saying we'll end up with 60? It's five feet. Five feet's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm good. Did we do the public hearing? Not and yet. What, what, what is this going to be seasonal? I mean, this is going yeah, to be. Se yeah. seasonal. Spring and summer. Mm -hmm. maybe a little bit in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Probably late spring to, you know, maybe early fall. Yeah. October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, uh, who monitors this? Does the. Uh, Police. Uh, our, our code enforcement officer would would, um, would would monitor it. Right. But I mean, if there's any trouble with people and pedestrians and roadways and everything, how is that picked up? I mean, it would get com a complaint would get filed with our somebody. Somebody would inevitably <coughs> complain to our office. Okay. In terms of the, well, it depends on what you're asking. If you're asking if you determine at some point in time that five feet is not enough, and it, that is it, if it's meeting the condition and it is approved, it is approved. If whatever is approved 
is if somehow the planters start inching, you know, across mm -hmm. what was agreed upon, that now that's a violation of the condition, and that's something that our code enforcement officer would issue a you typically notice a violation and give them an opportunity to cure, and if they didn't, he would reinspect and issue a summons, and then we would prosecute it down here. So um, it really is a question of once you set it in stone, yeah. are they complying with it or not, as opposed to you rethinking what you set in stone? I think it's, it's rethinking what I said. Yeah, right? yeah I, I think, think you got to be happy with it. Off the curb and buses slamming on their brakes well, well, before running them over. John, answer me this question if you can. Um, the, uh, the 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 pizza place right that that had the seating um, up until recently apparently um, how far out did they come onto the I, I I don't I I didn't do that application but I believe that was set a little further back and it was actually set up on a platform yeah, yes it was okay. high. Um, yeah. yeah so I think they were a little further a little closer to the building a little closer than, to the building okay than, than this uh, yeah. exact number I don't know I mean we could probably yeah. go back and look at the well, drawings they, that they were they were also flying bl a little blind with that they didn't have a survey that they just put those there and then our department gave them a violation they took it down and then we said to them you can do this but you need to have a survey that shows where your property begins and ends and then they said well forget it we don't want to do that and so then they just took it down Right, um, so we, we had a new survey done for this for this yeah. application, and um, so I think there were some some documents that showed eight feet. It turned out to be nine and a half feet, which was a little better. Um, so initially, we were going to make it eight feet anyway because that's what we thought it was. So um, going to eight feet shouldn't be a problem. And, and even if we had to reduce the number of tables, we could. I mean, I think the minimum for the requirement for the special use permit is 12, 12 chairs or? Right, 12, 12 seats, three tables. Yeah, so if we can reduce it to 12 seats uh, and yeah. maybe make them square tables and push them up against the building to make a little more room. So we, we could probably make it work. Uh, yeah, I, I, my, my point with, with the pizza place is that, um, that we didn't have any accidents <laughs> that I'm aware of. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, not to say that uh, look, maybe we came precariously close and it never registered, but uh, it, it's it's been tried and true on that very block. Uh, it, it's it, and, and it seemingly worked. Um, you, you're you're proposing something that's entirely within your property line. Yep. Um, you know, so I, I think if we can get it as 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 close to the building, leaving as much sidewalk as possible. Um, I, th I think I, if I'm reading everyone else's uh, uh minimum 60 yeah. inches five feet so five feet f well, uh, minimum yeah minimum right if you can do more we'll have you back every time all right we'll we'll, we'll try <laughs> yeah <laughs> can i clarify what's the minimum I, you want i'm saying at this point i'd love to see six feet it seems like that's a, a big ask okay. we'd like you to look at it but then we're that saying, would be a seven foot dining area what a six is that enough if you put square tables up against the i mean if we didn't have the planters there it might it would work but then the planters doesn't yeah, provide any. Yeah, the, and the planters provide a, a dividing line yeah. as well, which is kind of necessary. Yeah, I mean, we could we could change it from planters to like a, a some type of a railing, uh, which is much thinner. Yeah, but, but it's it not going to be as, as attractive. Yeah, no. Yeah. no. Yeah, but I'm concerned about people getting run over by buses, not the aesthetic of the planter. <laughs> We can have it all, Mr. Chairman. We can have it all. We can have it all. all right. Can I, I mean, make a I suggestion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the fire department wanted to see dimensions as well, is this something that you would want to have them look at before you act, take action? Uh, I mean, I did forward him the plans. Okay. You know, um, he, he just asked for a verification. But yeah, he I didn't. Can, yeah, he, I, we, we did circulate. I, the plans. I can. I can call. Tom and, yeah. and show them the plan before we do it also. So that's not so maybe just make that a condition of the approval. Yeah. That the just obstacles within it. Right, but the apron's not a walking surface, is it? Yeah. It is. It's brick. Yeah. The what material is the apron? The apron? The apron on the edge of the sidewalk, bordering the stamp, sidewalk stamp. and the street. Uh, is it brick? Is that, that it's red? Nice. That red? It's yeah. a stamped, it's stamped concrete. concrete. It's stamped, stamped concrete. concrete. Right. Stamped concrete, yeah. So it is part of the sidewalk. Part of the sidewalk. I think that might have been lawn at one time. Right. And then they, right. they just changed everything to stamped concrete. So that technically <coughs> you have more than five feet, right? Right, you do. With From the curb to planters, curb to property line. I curb to property line we have. We have uh, so the, 
the lamppost is and the garbage can and the bus sign are just five obstacles. Five point nine feet from the curb. Almost six feet. To the property line. Right. So with an additional eighteen, uh, we're going to end up with six, seven, more than seven feet from the curb. Yeah. I mean, I agree, except stamped concrete has a different surface feel because I'm very sensitive, and you almost feel like you're not supposed to be there. It's a trip hazard. Yeah, it is. So you really shouldn't be walking on it. want everything to be smooth concrete. But, but it is a buffer. You know, it, it, it does provide a, uh, something of a buffer as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's get this moving. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. So I guess <laughs> Look, it's, it's almost five 10 o'clock. feet, so we're saying. <laughs> so how much more do we want? We want 18 inches minimum more from you, right? To get the 42. We said it's 42. With 5.9, which is 60. This is the, the sidewalk is 42 inches, and then if you give it 18 inches, that'd be 60, right? Right, so it's 60 feet, 60 inches. So five feet. Yeah. Five feet plus the, plus the, the red part would give plus you. Plus the yeah, yeah, yeah. overflow. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. If you could do more, you great. Six, seven, seven and a half feet. Yeah. Okay, so another 18 inches. Okay, so I'll push everything back 18 inches, and then if we have to go down to, to four tables and 12 seats, that still complies with the special use permit. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Okay, good. Did we do public hearing? Right. You have to do public hearing. Public hearing, yep. So I make a motion to open the public hearing on this application, 2322 Westchester Meat Market, One Mill Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is that me? Thanks. Uh, I make a motion to close the public hearing on this application, 2322 Westchester Meat Market, One Mill Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So give me some notes here. So, uh, I have to just, there we go. Uh, close, so I make a motion to approve this application. Um, Westchester Meat Market, one mill, subject to the conditions we said about adding a minimum 18 more inches to the width or okay. distance from the curb. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. great, John. Great, thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you. Thank you. Have Enjoy the summer. summer. Have yep. a great summer. Thank you. The next application is the one we've all been waiting for, 2323, uh, Parish of Mecca Conception and Assumption of Our Lady, 265 White Plains Road. That's what we're saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. quick recess. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Nicholas Gabry from Bibbo Associates. We're the site planning engineers for the project. Um, Tim Allen apologizes he couldn't be here tonight. He was double booked on another planning board meeting, so he had to be in another town tonight, so I'm filling in for him. Uh, he's brought me up to speed on the Immaculate Conception Church project, which is, I'll keep it fairly brief because it's a pretty simple driveway realignment of the existing driveway entrance for the existing church property. Um, the existing <coughs> driveway is uh, connecting to White Plains Road and it's uh, fairly narrow and very close to the existing ball field, the kind of sand uh, brown area down there on the bottom part of the property. Um, so shifting the, prop, shifting the driveway approximately 50 feet to the south, which is to the left-hand side of that plan, uh, north is pointing to the right, and uh, connecting back to the existing parking lot. Um, the driveway, the new driveway uh, requires slight regrading uh, it's a very minor, um, gentle slope that flows out towards White Plains Road, um, which is a DOT uh, state highway. So we will be getting DOT permits for the state uh, portion in their right of way to do the driveway entrance. So that entrance will be brought up to DOT standards, uh, much wider curb cut, um, better flares for truck deliveries, and 
passenger cars coming and going to the school and to the church. Um, the, uh, the slope is coming out towards Westchester Avenue, or White Plains Road, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, with DOT standards, we will be creating a low point at the curb at line with the road so that water won't be flowing onto the state highway and there won't be any issues with ponding or icing in the winter. Um, the existing driveway uh, will be removed and just seeded and grassed. Um, there will be several parallel parking spaces along the new driveway added and a new uh, <coughs> pedestrian sidewalk, which will run down the right-hand side of that driveway, allowing pedestrians to come and go to the site much easier than now and uh, much more safely. So um, very much a safety concern and improved situation in the new driveway. Um, you mentioned that the existing driveway, which is the entrance driveway to the church property, uh, it was going to be uh, seated, graded out and seated. Is it going to be graded at the same elevation of the field with retainage, or is it going to be, because I know there's retaining walls on both sides, right? Uh, I don't believe it's a major regrading. I believe the, the existing roadway will just be seated and at the existing elevation that's at now. Um, I don't believe there's plans. I do have the project team here with me and Father Sorgi to help answer any questions, but I don't believe there's any plans to um, create any regrading on that side. Got it. We know there, there is a retaining wall, and this, this is the entrance to the parking lot. The, the egress is not getting changed at all, correct? Correct. Yeah, so this is just the end, and, and the egress is two lanes with, with parking, I think, on, the, on, on the either side. This is just one narrow lane right now, and that's, I guess, the way it's been for a long, long time. But it definitely does have a, a retaining wall that looks like it could be marble on the, or, or some, some sort of granite, uh, some sort of stone, for sure, on the left when you come in. And then on the right, I think it's just a fence mm -hmm. uh, with, with, you know, a slope uh, that, that um, has the ball field on the other side. So it, it, it you know, definitely Lewis is correct. There, there's something of a, uh, a tunnel that you'd be left with if you didn't raise the, uh, the, the elevation of that. Uh, but but I'd, I'd certainly, I, I would want to see what, what, what you're doing with the new roadway. Yeah, the new roadway, I believe, was uh, approximately 2 to 3% in grade, pitching upward from the uh, um, White Plains Road up to the site. So I believe that's a, a slight regrading, partially filling maybe, to create a little bit less of a tunnel. Okay. Um, so I can talk about that with Tim, and we can ad adopt that into the plan. And uh, how, many, how many lanes is the, uh, the new uh, proposed um, entrance going to be? It's, it's wide enough for two-way traffic, but I think the idea is to still have a main entrance and an exit to keep traffic flow um, organized and around the site um, simplified for the users. But uh, currently it's, it's, it's one fairly narrow lane, you know, with the, uh, the retaining wall on one side and the, you know, the, the, the slope and the fence on the other and with the ball field. Is it going to be two lanes or is it just going to be one lane coming in? Yeah. Um. Yeah, which is one lane, yeah. Yep. Both arrows coming into the top of the road. There's two entrance in it. And uh, here you can see the parallel line. So it actually joins up to the, the existing uh, before it hits the, the main parking lot. Correct. The yeah, main okay. Green shade is the existing driveway, which will be removed and seated. Yep. And it does connect almost back into the same location. Got it. So that's that wall remains. That's the existing retaining wall that you're just pointing to? Ah, okay. So. I think I understand now. Yeah. So, so it looks like on the left side of the driveway, the new driveway, there will be retainage or a berm going up to existing grade. And then on the, on the right, right, yeah, right, exactly. Um, now, I know there, there's a slight high point here where some of the regrading will have to happen. Yeah. Um, I believe this down slightly to the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. So I can look at our profiles and we can try to make that transition as I know there's a big tree also um, at the end of the existing driveway on the left. Um, I, I don't know if that can be salvaged or not, or what your intentions are with that. We have, uh, yep. we have that tree marked, the 20-inch tree marked to be removed. 
Yep. Right under one of the lanes. Okay. So mm -hmm. smaller trees. All right. Are, are there going to be trees planted? Um, is there a uh, landscaping plan? There, there mm -hmm. isn't any uh, plans to provide any landscape planting, just the receiving of the. Okay. Because there was a there was a, a a house that was located on that property that got torn down. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a, not in the greatest shape. But I know that was removed. You can yeah, see it on. Yeah, yeah. You can see that, it here. It's that's right. Uh, yeah. No, I've, I've, I'm aware of that. So um, that's been removed. So you kind of have an open space right now, mostly open space, with the exception of that one tree. But there there were trees there beforehand, and maybe that was a function of there being a a house there, um, you know. I, I, I know this is. You know, I, I just ask if there's, you know, any any plan to put any trees in that in the the, the what's now uh, the the vacant area. Uh, we can talk about that with the project team, and we'll consider that. Okay. I love right. trees. Yeah. Right, because right now, if you flip back to your color, to your, so yeah, that. Anyone else? That's fine. Right now, what is that space right now? I know that whatever is demolished, has grass been planted there? Uh, no, to the left. Okay. Yeah, hold yeah. on. This is, uh, oh, sorry, this is grass area now where the building was? Yes. It's all grassed over. That was the house. Yeah, right. And I think there's also a wall that's getting built right there. That 18 inch wall at the south side by the street. I think it's identical, no, down towards the 22. There's a, uh, Proposed 18 inch high stone wall. Uh, we have a stone wall shown here. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, with some steps coming up off the road. Or need some steps. But that's new. That, that stone wall. That I think that's. I think that's existing. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you guys grab the mic, by the way? Uh, just sure, because yeah. we. Yeah. I know we're record. <laughs> I, I hope. To, hope the question. A uh, part of it is we are proposing uh, an 18 inch stone wall. To continue the existing stone wall that's here, so that that would be filled in from this section to this section, with a new stone wall. Make it consistent. Yeah. To make it consistent. Because this is the existing one that's coming along here, and then we'll just pick it up after the new driveway yeah. entrance, and then. Are you going to uh, uh, repurpose the <coughs> retaining wall that's on the left of the existing, uh, because that has a lot of nice stone on it? I, I, is that is that the stone that you're going to be using? Uh, for that stone repurpose wall. the stone over yes here. Mm -hmm. well, we're, what we're doing is we're bringing up a sidewalk along that stone wall oh uh, got it picks up to this existing sidewalk so you have pedestrian access along the existing uh, i mean the new proposed driveway that. That okay be along that stone wall there good and, what, and you know one of the again about the safety issues is that we're pulling the, um, the existing driveway was here. Now, by pulling the uh, proposed driveway away, we're increasing the distance from the ball field that's there now. Good. Is there going to be any sight lighting or anything? No. No. That's, we're not increasing the lighting at all. Okay. Can I just ask a question about the rock outcropping? Just, just to verify, there, there won't need to be any blasting to get rid of that. Well, right out. now, we don't anticipate any okay. blasting at all. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the only high spot that we have is right here. Uh, what's the just in general the sign the uh, traffic pattern for a one-way street that is 22 turning right in, and there's two lanes there. I guess whoever's there can pull in to either way, and then pick which lane they're going to use. Right, yes, you, uh, you, you could have access, you know, by doing this with two lanes, you could have access yeah, you from access this from way. Both. So people making a left can right. also pull in with someone right. from the right. And then the con it would give us continuity from the exit because the, the, the volume that comes in here with two lanes and when the volume coming out two lanes is, gives us a constant flow that you don't have a constriction point right now with yeah, the entry. I guess in the mornings it gets jammed yeah. up because there's only one lane there. So whatever volume comes in now can access yeah. it at the same time. Right. Although, although it does make sense to have uh, a, a big, because mass ends at one time, but people get there with a 
variety yeah. of time. And this also yeah. gives us, you know, again, it cleans up yeah. the access with the street courts. Mm -hmm. And then we also got a positive, I don't know if you saw the, um, the comments from the county. Yes. I mean, the, 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 their first paragraph, you know, sums up what, uh, about the whole concern about safety and the yeah. access flow, so. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean the, the, the fact that this came in today was almost divine intervention, wouldn't you say? <laughs> so, I guess while we're at it, <laughs> yeah. just one little point I had mentioned, the exit sign on the other side, sometimes that turns that into, after church, one lane because someone parks along the Ooh. this side on the left. Oh, well, that's human nature. That's something that they have to deal yeah. with internally. Yeah, can we, do, put a, can we put up a sign or something to get them to do that? Is there a sign? Yeah, why don't we put something there to get those people from parking there? Because, I mean, I know they want, should be a church, and we're not discouraging it, but they really shouldn't park there. So can we add a sign there? Yeah, there's parking on the right side as you exit, yes, but the, 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 yeah, when people park the on the left, side. that's... Okay. It's not good. No, okay, cool. Otherwise, I'm good. <laughs> we all want to go home. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. could I just, um, just could we just ask about the two? There's two comments from the county letter that just didn't get addressed in the presentation. I just, if I could just ask, um, yeah. the county planning board um, made a comment about uh, bicycle parking and electric vehicle parking. Are those possibilities on the site plan? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that with uh, with the project team and make those considerations. We'll respond uh, to the board. Um, there's nothing on the plan now for proposed bike parking, but we'll consider that. Okay. Uh, and then also they asked about um, if it was possible with the new construction to use pervious pavement materials um, for the additional parking spaces that are being built along the, the side of the road, um, as well as if any type of um, landscaping treatments like rain gardens or whatnot could be incorporated in the landscaping plan to just mitigate the runoff that's uh, from the uh, the new pavement. Yeah, I, I think the uh, pervious paver spaces could be an option that could work here um, and help kind of manage the slight change in impervious um, with the expanded driveway width and the new sidewalks. So we'll we'll work on that with the project team and we'll talk and uh, come up with a design that works. Where would that be? The entire length of the new driveway? Or? And the parking spaces. And the, yeah. Yeah. Parking spaces? Oh, yeah. Space? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, do, it does strike me, though, that with the, with the removal of the, the building that was previously there, probably the net um, impervious. Yeah, yeah, you, you probably, that's yeah. But, but that's probably not counted in this, in this yeah, it mm -hmm. may not. Right. I mean, these yeah. are just longstanding county yeah, policies yeah, in general yeah. anyways. Yeah. Understood. What kind of stuff you want. Do we have to make a comment about the Department of uh, highways in the right. I mean, I did refer the application to the um, state DOT um, permit engineer on June fifteenth. Oh. So I, I did send her the application. But I think you got a res did you get a response yet? Or? Not yet. No. All right. So is our approval going to be contingent on that, or that's just a detail that gets followed up later? Uh, I mean, you could make it contingent on, on their approval. A favorable I mean. response from the right. county? Uh, w one of the ideas here, uh, because the DOT can take a substantial amount of time, even for a simple realignment like this, um, is to maybe have some of the work that can be completed outside the D DOT right away, um, start construction on that work, interior work of the driveway realignment, um, prior to the issuance of the DOT permit approval. What if they, what if they say no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we would certainly have to make sure we're at a certain point where there, all the pre-application meetings and all the agreements have been in place that the, the driveway is, is in the right spot with the DOT and they agree to that. Um, we can work on that. Um, but I know some of their final processing of the documents can hold up like a construction permit. But I mean, that would be at your own risk, right? It would be at our, our own risk of, yes, if right. they somehow declined the location. Um, uh, Lucas, isn't the building permit contingent on the state DOT approval? I mean, yeah. I right. Mean, would, oh, so. Yeah, so, right, so you, you, would, you would need that approval first before the town would issue a building permit to do the work. We can talk to the building department about that but, and verify that, but if that's the case, then um, yeah, it's certainly obvious. we would have to get the That's fine. DOT on board. Okay. That's, yeah, you could work around that. So, uh, public hearing? Yeah. 
Uh, we're just going to see if anyone has any comments. So I make a motion to open the public hearing on, oh my gosh, um, application 23-23, Parish or Mac and Conception. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, close the public hearing, same application, 23-23, Immaculate Conception and Assumption of Mary, uh, Assumption of Our Lady. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so I guess just subject to the approval from the state DOT on the curb cut uh, is a condition of approval. We make a, we make a motion to approve this application. Uh, Immaculate Conception and Assumption, 265 White Plains Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yep. Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, next application is 2117 15 Tuckahoe. Good evening, Michael Master Giacomo from Master Giacomo Engineering. Um, here for 15 Tuckahoe, it's a proposed five lot subdivision. Since we were last in front of the board, we've been working with uh, George Malley's office in regards to the site drainage to come up with a, a viable solution for this project. One of the solutions we came up with is we created an extra lot. Um, Zoning, but what it does is it creates an area for us to do a, a subsurface drainage system for the roadway to pick up all the water. And then what we're doing is we're overflowing it down um, to the right side of the existing house through an easement and tying into the storm drainage down on Tuckahoe Avenue. So that's what we've been working on. We still have a, a little bit more work to do with them as far as detailing all that. And that's it. Um, so I think, and I read Joe's memo from a while ago when this was in front of us, and that, I guess I didn't read it in great detail, but I know he had a few pages. So those are the issues that you're addressing. Yes, yes. A lot of them we've addressed already as far as the alignment of the road to create the curve, to meet the zoning codes and all that. So we've done a lot of that work. We're just right now detailing more the drainage, the, the whole uh, drainage for not just the road, but also for the houses as well. Was that empty lot on the original subdivision that you bought to us previously, or that's been added? Since? No, that's been added. That's so been that's added. So that's a new plan. Got it. Yeah, so what we did is we shifted everything down in order to create that lot, so then we, can, we had an area to put a drainage system for the roadway. Cool. So the way it's been explained to me is you're here mainly to present what you have and get us to take lead agency on this so you can move forward? Yes, that is correct. Okay, cool. I'm good with that. Yeah, when, when you were last before us, uh, it looks like we initially reviewed this in April of 2021. Correct. Which, um, it was, was it the same, uh, um, the same number of, of single family homes were proposed or yeah yeah that that's so. all stayed the same it's still five single family homes um one one of the, the changes which created a lot of um the revisions in all the drawings the existing residents were proposing to keep uh, even though it doesn't meet zoning you know we request to go in front of the zoning board at some point to get variances to try to keep that residence and then it would be just the construction of the four houses at the rear kind of help minimize the impact on Tuckahoe Avenue and the neighbors and all that, and it kind of keeps all the construction in one corner out of the way. Okay, so we can look at this more in the fall or in September. Cool, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, open the public hearing, because this has never been in public hearing before. I guess not. I think so. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, I guess it's not. Okay, good. So I make a motion. We have a preliminary I'm sorry? Yeah, was it, preliminary. There was never a public hearing. No. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. It has not been before. It's not an open one. So I do make a motion to open the public hearing on application 2117, 15 Tucko Avenue subdivision. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
Comments? Um, my name is Vincent Diori. I live on the north side of the proposed property. Uh, water has been an issue in that area before this. It's a swamp when there's regular rain. I understand that there is a system being set up to fix that. Um, you know, when I expanded my driveway, I had to put in a, a, a grate with a dry well, and I had to get an architect and all this stuff for the town to approve it. Uh, whatever they're putting in, who's maintaining it and who's guaranteeing if it breaks down, is it going to be fixed? Or if the water gets pushed onto my property, uh, who's going to be responsible for that? Because the sewer system, I don't have a sewer within four or five houses on the dead end, uh, which is something that we talked to the town before and that was denied. But uh, I spend money on sub pumps, backup generators. I don't want water in my basement. Uh, and I just feel like this is bound to push water towards our area. Are, are you to the east of the property? Uh, it, it, as I understand it, the, this property is bounded by a, a parking lot on the west. Uh, no, I'm, in the, I'm on the north. north. The north? Uh, so I'm right behind Country Markets. My backyard is Country, Country markets. markets on one side and then the property on the other side. Oh. So let's say not to put off your questions because they are going to be addressed in greater detail than we're able to tonight. Okay. Right now, the applicant is in front of us just to, it's more a procedural thing right now for us to take. I get that, but that last group yeah. that was here yeah. has, <laughs> seems to have spent a long time fighting the water problem and it was kind of passed over pretty quickly that the rules are all being followed. Uh, and it's great to say the rules are being followed, but yep. when it's an issue for my house and my family, you know, it's great that new houses are getting built and the town's gonna get money and people are gonna get paid, but when money has to come out of my pocket to fix the problem that could have been fixed or shouldn't even exist at all, uh, that's where it becomes an issue for me as, as yep. a resident. Well, you, you said yourself you, you had to put in dry wells and, and, and all of this when you did construction. Um, as the chairman was alluding to, um, you know, we, we have our consultants. Uh, you, you, you heard, you were here. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it may not be, it may not satisfy, uh, you know, everyone here, but you do understand that we can only, I, I, I'm, oh, not, no. I'm not a water expert. No, I, I, I have to rely on the issues what today are what ifs. Yeah. You know, what if yeah. this happens? What so if that so happens? we have a process in place, though, that, <laughs> right. that um, a, a, again, as the chairman was suggesting, um, you know, this, this is an initial phase, but there will be plenty of opportunity for this, this issue. And water is a, a definitely a big issue. It was, it was a significant issue with yeah. the prior subdivision, I, I, I can see that since the last time this application was before us, um, the applicant has adopted uh, sort of a technique that was used uh, you know, on the Beach Street as well, 203 right. Beach, which is to devote a lot to, um, to capturing some of, the, some of the runoff, some of the, uh, to managing some of the, the, the water. Um, so there will, be, there will be plenty of opportunity and, sure. and, and importantly, you know, we will have a consultant who will, um, you know, who is as objective as we can find, um, who will evaluate, you know, is, is this a problem or not? Uh, right. And, and we, we have already received materials suggesting water's a problem here. <laughs> right. So we, we're very aware of that right I, from the inception. Right. And the applicant will have to yeah, show us. Up and that, say, yeah. put it on record. I just want to be on record as saying, you yep. know. Yeah. I mean, I don't, listen, build away. I don't care about that. I mean, it's an empty space. Uh, hopefully they clean up some of the brush behind it uh, and improve it. But at the end of the day, you know, I just got to make sure my house and, and, yep. and my investment, which was based on what was there currently, yep. doesn't get yep. altered. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's part of what this board is here for, to make sure that we're, we're so, hearing all of the, 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 the viewpoints from the people who are most interested, right. uh, who have a sense of the neighborhood, who have a sense of the conditions. Um, and that we also then uh, listen to our consultants who are professionals in, in their particular areas. So thank you. Okay. Feel free to come back. If Just so you're aware, uh, when the consultant is briefing the board, there'll be an opportunity for you to raise questions there thank too. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Uh, I just want to touch on please. the drainage and all that. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things with uh, Tremelli's office is um, number one, we did very minimal grading 
towards that side of the property because we did not want to affect any of the neighbors. What that also did was we created a little bit of a, a quote unquote back pitch so then we capture the road that we're proposing and putting it into a drainage system and overflowing it to try to mitigate and minimize any possibility of affecting any of the neighbors as well. So that that's part of the redesign. That's all in the plans that our consultant's reviewing. Yep. That's all on the plans that our consultant's reviewing right now. Correct. The description you just, yep. Okay. Yep. okay, got it, thank Great. you. Please. Uh, Jean Gessaw, Five Duluth Place. Uh, so I just have always been told, and I think it's true, that there is a creek that runs through that property, and it empties out at the Girl Scout cabin and then runs down to the California Road and uh, Highland. Just if you could check that out and see if that's really true, because we always get water when it rains, and all along there you can... I mean, you could almost see that there's an underground creek. And if you walk, walk over the bridge at the Girl Scout cabin, you can see that creek. Well, where is that coming from? I think it's coming from this property in our backyard. So just want to make what you is your address? Of that. Five Duluth Place. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More comments? Yeah. Okay. Do they do, they've done a number of borings out here? Yes, we did, uh, we did a bunch of borings out there. We did about they three or four. They find groundwater somewhere? I guess we could ask The Gary. groundwater table towards the back is a little higher. That's why we decided to put the drainage more up in the front where we had better percolation rates. We had a better soil at the front. How far down was the groundwater? Uh, about four foot and change. That's, good, four that's feet. the comment we got from someone. It was, yeah, it was yeah, a little shallow. It's right but, there. Yeah. I mean, the other part of the, the whole uh, application is going to be a full landscaping plan where we're working with our landscape architect to pick trees that will help soak up some of the, you know, the groundwater as well and try to dry it up as well. Uh, I guess this is more a question for the consultants. It might be seasonal or it's standing, the groundwater? I think it might be seasonal be, just because the groundwater table always fluctuates. Yeah, in the spring. And especially this year, we, had, we really had no snow. So it didn't have a chance for the ground to freeze like it typically does, and it lowers the groundwater table. We had a lot of rain this year than snow. So the groundwater table is higher this year. Right. If we have a drier summer, it'll lower, and if we have a real winter that we have a good amount of snowfall, it'll stay low as well. So yeah. groundwater table always fluctuates yeah. up a and down. And, and the proposed lot, uh, I'll just call it the water retention, stormwater retention lot, um, that, that just holds the water and then dissipates it over time. Uh, it holds it during a heavier yes. water event and, and then dissipates it, but it doesn't drain into anything, right? Well, no. So what we did in, in working with Mr. Cervelli's office is not only does it percolate into the ground, but on a very hard storm event, we have an overflow system which will go through the cul-de-sac um, just to the side of the, an, an, an easement down the side of the existing lot into and then turn and go down uh, Tuckahoe Avenue and tie into there's large 24 inch uh, diameter pipes as storm drainage that's I think a sage place is where we're tying into so when we do have a large influx of a big rainfall we do have something for it to get out and min you know minimize any impacts on neighbors Right. And the same thing will hold true with the drainage for the lots. We're going to have overflows to go into the storm drainage and get out. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Well, okay. we can well, talk we'll, more about yeah. this another time. Yep. But for now, um, we leave the public hearing open. I make a motion. Uh, no more comments from the public. It's going to stay open. So I'm going to make a motion to classify. The 15 Tucko Avenue subdivision as an unlisted action under CICRA and for the East Chester Planning Board to declare itself, to declare its intent to be lead agency in the coordinated review of that action pursuant to New York State Environmental Quality Review Act for application 2117, 15 Tucko Avenue subdivision and to direct staff to prepare and circulate the required noticing of this declaration. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank good. you very much. Have a good summer. Thank you. Is that the plan to be back here in September? Is that the plan to return, get it all wrapped up, or continue and be back here in September? Yes. Okay, cool. Great. So we'll be back here in September, guys.
Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. One more. One more. One more. Yeah. The last application is 2249 120 Lakeshore Drive. Wait till you see. Oh, you totally faked Rob out. He's like, there's no one here. <laughs> I wouldn't describe Lewis as a no one. I was halfway to my car. <laughs> <laughs> he was already three quarters in bed. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> Make it exciting, Lewis. All right. Yeah. All right, I think we all have to vote, right? We need a, all of us to say yay, right? Yeah. When there's mm. only three. Good evening. Lewis Campana, architect of record. Uh, 120 Lakeshore, uh, Lakeshore Drive uh, is a lot situated in the R, uh, R12, I believe, R15 zone. Um, it is uh, situated on a corner lot. The existing home is situated on a corner lot, I should say. Yeah. Um, and on the lot exists a, exist a uh, one-story dwelling uh, with a basement which is partially exposed to the rear and side yard. Uh, we're proposing to uh, remove the roof, put a second story on the, ha uh, on the existing footprint, and then expand uh, the front slightly with a new front entrance um, and then uh, one-story additions. We all, we're also adding a veranda across the front um, with a stone, uh, stone wall and some planting that you'll see in a landscape plan. Uh, we were at the ARB hearing last month where there was just uh, one comment regarding uh, a railing in the rear of, uh, rear of the house, and we removed uh, piers, which were located on the two outside corners of the balcony, uh, so that this way that railing matched the other one above. This is the, uh, the terrace right down, right down below. Uh, there were also uh, a recommendation from the ARB to uh, include a landscape plan based on the location uh, of the site being in a prominent location on a corner uh, with somewhat of a, uh, an acute angle. And we were able to get that done for, uh, for this hearing. And uh, what the landscape architect uh, is proposing is uh, a number of plantings along the border of the property. Uh, to give it a nice, no, I wouldn't say a barrier, but a, a soft, uh, a softness uh, around, around that intersection and corner. Uh, there'll be a, a, a number of um, perennials and also evergreen planting, along with existing trees that will be pruned and, uh, and maintained. It was also a recommendation to show uh, a plan with uh, tree protection for all trees that are to be saved. And you can see along the perimeter here, there's a number of, uh, a number of trees, both deciduous and, and evergreen or conifer. Uh, and that you can see we have tree protection uh, along the inside of the property there. Uh, there are also a few trees that will be rem uh, removed. Uh, there's a tree up here near the, uh, near the wood deck, which will be removed. Um, one tree, which is in not, not in great shape, right by the walls that will be constructed. That will be removed as well, along with a tree um, on the back corner. All the other existing trees are to, to remain, and a good portion of them are actually located on um, the town right of way. The existing driveway will remain. We're going to be also adding some uh, evergreen planting along that border as well. And the rear yard will be cleaned up. There is, uh, the lake actually comes into the rear yard of this house, and right now it's just very overgrown, so all that will be cleaned up and exposed to the rear yard. So it'll just flow right down into, uh, into, the, into the water. Good. Can you show us the, uh, uh, the before after again on the... Uh... Of the house? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really gonna have some height to it, huh? So the existing... Yeah. I'm sorry? It's really gonna have some height to it. Yeah, compared to... Uh, yeah, I mean, ba it based on how it sits on the yeah. lot as well, it, it, yeah. it does climb up, so yes, it does have some height. 
Um, the existing house is composed of brick and yellow uh, aluminum siding. So all that obviously yeah. will be removed, replaced with um, with stucco veneer, an EFIS stucco veneer. Actually, I should do this. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So it'll be an EFIS stucco veneer, um, a gray standing seam uh, roof. We have uh, white Anderson 400 series windows, uh, white boral trim. Boral is a material that I've been using more frequently. It just holds the, the paint uh, finish much, uh, much better and feels more authentic than PVC. We'll have white uh, K-style aluminum gutters. The railings will be black, uh, black wrought iron with square and rectilinear profiles. We'll have a stone, um, a field stone veneer on the veranda wall and the piers. And all the light fixtures located around the house will be uh, the DeVos Square scones from Restoration Hardware. Yep. Good. Looks, looks really nice. So we, do have, uh, we do have a drainage, drainage plan as well. Um, the house is uh, basically, well, it's taking the same footprint of the existing, so we're going vertically. And the increased impervious coverage is the, is the veranda. So there's a very minor drainage system being implemented. I believe it's three Coltex. Uh, specified by the civil engineer. What, what's what's the current drainage system or gr drainage situation? I should say, is there anything? Um, there, yeah. there must be a dry well. Okay. But the rest probably goes into the lake. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, uh, the the property flows naturally down that way, and that's okay. the catchment area for the good sheet flow. All right. I, I don't have any further questions. It looks do, good. Do, yeah. do you have the colors? Just kind of curious. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. That's why. Thanks. So it's Parix stucco. Uh, the color will, um, will be canvas. And the white trim will be uh, super white. With white trim. Yes. What color is the roof? The standing right. seam? It's a gray standing seam. Gray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. Very handsome. Public hearing. I yep. make, so hang on. I make a motion to open the public hearing on application 2249, 120 Lakeshore Drive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Make a motion to close the public hearing on the same application, 2249, 120 in Lakeshore Drive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, just before we vote, usually there's something we put as a condition about the landscape plan that, um, you know, it is built per that and someone signs. Well, is this, this so, I think the, was the landscape plan required on this one or was it? It was, it no, was not sorry. really, was it? It was yeah. not, but yeah. we're going the extra mile. So do we do we need to make, make to put that requirement in if there was not initially a requirement for the landscape plan? So yeah. well, it's part of the application, isn't it? Yeah, I okay. think that's yeah. that's yeah. fair. That's okay. a fair. Okay. Answer. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, mm -hmm. so subject Isn't to some certification with from licensed <laughs> landscape architect that it's been built per the plans. That's the condition. I'll make a motion to approve this application, 2249, 120 Lakeshore Drive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn the June 22nd, 2023 planning board meeting. The next meeting will be on September 28th, 2023. Wait, wait, let's, let's get Lewis get up here to vote. Oh. Come on. I, I, I want to, I, he's, he's like Shoei Otani. <laughs> I walk into my car. Pitch and back at the same time. Uh, I guess. <laughs> so second. Voila. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Have a nice summer. Good night. Have a great summer. Yep. Thank you.